Hey, everybody, what's up? Welcome. You're here right on time. The stream has only begun. I was waiting for you. But now that you're here, I guess we can start. You are here, aren't you? You're just an egotistical streamer. You ain't heard nothing yet. I mean, hope you're all having a great day. Middle of the week. Middle of the month. Wow. Wow. How about that? It's Wednesday and the 15th. Here's to our internet service provider, the Overlord Cox. May the great Cox bestow upon us a stable connection today. And an uninterrupted viewing experience. But yeah, I hope you guys are all having a nice, lovely afternoon or evening, wherever you are. It is 3.23 p.m. here in fabulous Las Vegas, where it has been raining every day. It's very weird, very strange. Um, I, I hope our water reservoirs are getting pumped. It has just been a rainy, stinky series of weeks. Which I kind of like, actually. So, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm vibing. I enjoy the... Being able to work indoors while it is raining. <laughs> and not having to go out. Just being cozy, you know? It's getting nice and cozy. Hi, Town Chat. I got onto the waitlist for the graduate program I applied for. They're gonna... What, what happens if you have to wait five years? You're going to forget all of the things you need to know for that program. Are you one of those that guys that says, we needed this rain? Just because everybody says it doesn't mean it's not true, okay? We need, we really needed this rain. Um, because it's, it's actually just more true <laughs> in Las Vegas than anywhere else. Uh, because we had... We have a basically in, in Nevada there is a five category drought system. And I think last year I, I think it was a record setting drought. I don't remember what the longest dry period in Nevada is. Longest drought in Nevada. Let's see. Uh, was 269 weeks. It began on... The, okay, that was 2011 to 2017. I don't remember. It, it was something not that bad, but it was similar. So yeah, we really needed it. Unironically, yes, we need Lake Mead to fill, not to hide the bodies that the mob has dumped in it, but um, so that people can continue to live here. It's, it's like, Las Vegas population has been booming. I, I was just one of thousands that have moved here in the last uh, decade. And I don't know if you knew this, but deserts in the middle of nowhere with no natural resources uh, other than, like, the silver and gold that they found, you know, a century, two centuries ago or whatever. We're not really meant to live out here. Which is also why I respect Las Vegas so much, okay? Because I, you know, big ambitions aside, uh, humans are good for one thing and one thing only, to fly in the face of nature and assert their will, okay? If humans aren't constantly shaking their fist at the heavens and demanding to be respected by the cosmos, then why bother at all? We have a, we have a short blip on the radar. 
Our existence is, is small in the grand scheme of things. Let's leave our mark on it, you know? Hey, hello, beginning stream raiders. What's up? Where's the fish? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hello, a uh, new Twitch feature as well. What is this? Hi These are like highlighted messages. Does everybody in chat see this? Or is it just me? I think this is a new Twitch feature. Pretty cool. Just I see it. Okay. I wasn't supposed to tell you that then, I guess. That was a secret. <laughs> but hello everybody, what's up? Tara Lacron, Roof, Dreyer G, CG Core, Four Seasons, Phil Moon, Feistel, Jenny Takara, welcome Muchi Mochi, Bear Shark, Curus Dragons, Evanito, Burnt Heat, right on time, what's up? Hello Northern Nine, Quite Adept, Flying Potatoes, Just Confused, Sink, Ulrich, and more. Look at all these sick new features. But yeah, hope you guys had a nice stream and, and welcome aboard. We're just getting started. I was talking about... Okay. Chat. Here's the thing, right? I've said this for a long time. Why are billionaires so boring now? Why hasn't Jeff Bezos built a new wonder of the world yet? Okay. I, I just, I'm just saying, like, if, if people are going to have s more money than we can possibly fathom, like, in a literal sense, the amount of money that some people in the world have is a, is a figure that you cannot comprehend. On a, I'm not being, like, facetious, it tr literally, they are numbers that we are not made to understand. Why haven't we built hanging gardens? Why haven't we built new Eiffel Towers with that money? Why haven't we built giant, like, evil fortress castle keeps that they live in with, like, a throne? I would respect them so much more. Yeah, like a volcano lair. Uh... They're just like, Let, let's build more factories and warehouses. Yeah, let's make parking lots that uh, can hold 20,000 cars. I wouldn't even begrudge the billionaires like if, if, of their giant fortunes if they at least built like um, a new like Casa de la Familia, you know? Did I say that right? What the the cathedral, like a, like the Gaudi cathedral, you know? Make more stuff like that. Build the Death Star already. <laughs> the line in Saudi Arabia would be cool. The idea of it is cool. How long is it supposed to take? A revolution in urban living. Okay, here's what I don't understand about the line. <clears throat> Is the line above ground, dug into the ground, or both? Yes. Okay, um, let me see. How, how long is it supposed to be? 170 kilometers is long. It'll be, it'll stretch from the Red Sea to approximately to the city of Tabuk. Intended to have 9 million residents. Well, 
with a total width of 200 meters and a total height of 500 meters. Powered entirely by renewable energy. Okay, I love this little footnote. Artificial intelligence will monitor the city and use predictive and data models to find ways to improve daily life for its citizens. I don't believe that exists yet. I, I cast doubt on, on at least that. Residents will be paid to submit data to the line. <laughs> okay. The estimated building cost is one to $200 billion. With some estimates as high as one trillion. There's no way, like one, one to two hundred billion dollars. That's a that's a, gotta be a low figure to to house create a totally renewable energy source, artificial man-made super city line that is supposed to be able to hold nine million residents. There's no way. That's so many people. I highly doubt that that's like I one I believe the one trillion figure like just 5x that hello chat but yeah the artificial intelligence to monitor the city I, <clears throat> I doubt the plan was announced in 2021 in October 2022 drone footage confirmed that construction was underway go for it Go for it. We it's it's high time that some man-made arcologies were created. Like they can't just be Stellaris mega constructs forever. We have to actually put some effort into it. If they really wanted to build a future city, it should look much more like the original Epcot than the line. I don't know. There, there, there's there's more than one way to go about it. The reason why a line works, in theory, is because you will have public transportation that only needs to go there and back. Whereas I, I think Epcot was more structured in a giant circle with like roads and highways and driving, which should in theory be like irrelevant. Like, there, there really shouldn't be a need for roads and highways and stuff with the population density that they're shooting for. Epcot hypothetical population. <clears throat> how, do you, how do you even find the original Epcot? Walt Disney Epcot prototype. Yeah, the <clears throat> it's called the Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Okay, let's look at the Wikipedia page. The word population does not occur on the Wikipedia page. Okay, it would have been 20... Like, Epcot's plan was 20,000 citizens. So... There's a stark difference between 20,000 citizens and 9 million. Uh, and part of that is because I guess the theory is if it's going to be like 200 meters tall, they're going to be able to stack residentials one on top of the other up and down the walls. It's just much more condensed. There is also something to be said for just a basic geometry lesson where you will be able to fit, like humans in general live in squares, right? We we live in rectangular rooms. We have walls on four sides. We have a door on one of those sides. We don't live in round spaces. We don't live in domes. Um, therefore, you can fit more squares into a rectangular line than you can fit into a round space, just by definition, right? Like that's, I, I would say more practical. The line seems more practical than, than Epcot, from my layman's understanding. Oh, maybe you don't live in a dome. You don't live in a dome. I live in an igloo. I don't know about you, Ital. 
We don't live in one dimension either. Okay, they didn't... They're not just drawing with a permanent marker or a line and go like, live in that! Shrink down and live inside of that! And just drawing across the top of the surface. We need to build a square planet. Why make it a line though? I just, I just said all the things why. Because if you have trains, trams, and, and um, monorails, or whatever the hell public transportation you have, they can just stay on a straight line and go all the way up and down. Both sides. It's extremely efficient that way. And what if there's a crash? You have more than one... You have more than one tram in your nine million population city. <laughs> I love I love how um the the default Twitch chat response to anything is complete defense. Just you guys go to work and your hello my name is says devil's advocate in your own handwriting on your greeting tag. City Skylines 2 line build. Here's the thing about City Skylines. It was unironically at launch the most efficient to use the smallest road size and to have as few intersections as possible. Uh, that was actually the best way to play the game on accident. If you could remove all traffic lights because of the way that they, they didn't simulate agents, you could kind of just do whatever the hell you wanted. Uh, most of my 2015 City Skyline cities were as few roads as possible, even as few as one road, if you could manage that. And that was the best way to play the game. I still, to this day, only use two-lane roads with no traffic lights. Exactly. Imagine how far away everything would be for real, though. What, in the line? I don't know if you live in America, <laughs> but most of our major metropolitan cities here are concrete fortresses where it physically can't be further away in the line than it is here. Because the line is going to be 110 miles long, with, I'm assuming, high-speed rail transportation to get point to point in a straight line. Uh, for me, just to get to the other side of Las Vegas, like if I start in, let's say, the north and go to the south, we're talking like an hour and ten minutes of, of driving, and that's if there's no traffic. It'd probably be about 60 minutes without traffic, and then about 75, 80 minutes with traffic, and that's just to go from one side to the other. A high-speed rail would be able to... Um, traverse a long distance and that's assuming you're also assuming that like i live on the west side of the line but i get my hair cut a hundred miles east it's like that's not how it's gonna be right it's like nine if you live in a city of nine million people there's not just gonna be like oh there's one restaurant on the other side and i live over here it's nine million people there's gonna be like multiple copies of every type of business all throughout it you know what i'm saying just like how we live now. I gotta blow my notes. Hold on. Is the Strip a different city than Las Vegas? The Strip is in an unincorporated part of Las Vegas. It's Hard to explain. It's unincorporated. It's, it's for all intents and purposes, when you're just talking, it is in Las Vegas. But legally speaking, it's uh, different than the rest of the counties.
When I lived inside the largest city in the state I'm from, I had to drive past empty fields for 10 minutes to get to the closest grocery store. I live outside the U.S. now, and I have two grocery stores, five minutes walk. Exactly. Like, the whole point of these future tech cities is to promote that uh, sense of walkability in city planning and, and community, where you can just go outside of your apartment or your house or whatever you live in, and everything that you need to get to is within walking distance. But I think as Americans, a lot of us don't comprehend what a walkable city looks like. I don't. I, I have no idea what that's like. I've had to drive everywhere. And it's never close. What's up, Shadow Fox? Thanks for two years of sub. Welcome back. How's it going? Uh, Kimo also says Epcot is too hip to be square. I see what you did there. Thanks for the sub, Kimo. What's up? G Franco for the 54th month. Yo, welcome back. Builder M waving a chat. What's up, Builder? Dre or G, thank you for the five subs in one. Appreciate the tier three. And uh, welcome back for 33 months. Hello, Coronis. People arriving. Uh, Kiva Wallow, thanks for the three year sub. Says, let's go. And a sticky prime. Hey. Hi, sticky. Welcome to Big Ambitions. Let's get it. If I can unmute the game now. Walkable cities were around in America a hundred years ago, but then the car companies came along. That's Thank true, you. but if I had to choose between living in walkable cities in America a hundred years ago and right now, I'd pick right now, then, uh, 1923. <laughs> I'd pick right now still. You gotta come see my new villa in Marbella. We'll drink some sangrias together someday. It's amazing. Anyways, I'm glad to see you figured out how to increase your profit. Our next move is all about cutting out the middleman, the wholesaler. We gotta start importing our products ourselves. Very true. Thanks, Uncle Fred. All right, Uncle Fred hooking us up and helping us out. Ah. Oh. Got my Chad. Elpo <clears throat> Flimmerman. Patty's Patty's is open, but has no employees assigned. Okay, that's one of our businesses. We need to say it's closed. We got some work to do. Uh, when last we left off, we had just made a little bit of money. Because... Uh, what's the alert at the Griff Shop? It's dirty. So, our gift shop, the Griff Shop, just had some new product. We've started moving expensive gifts. Um... Which we need a little bit more data from to figure out how this is actually working for us, but our profit margins are go have gone up because we've we've got more product to sell. So we're selling cheap gifts and expensive gifts there. And the expensive gifts are retailing for like almost two and a half times more than the cheap gifts. Stock looks good. And uh, we became profitable enough that now we get to start a headquarters. So, we're, we're about to go open an office building, presumably to manage <laughs> our <laughs> burgeoning empire here. Uh, we're a little hungry, but that's okay. And I actually have enough money to go do something. So, rent a small office building and open a headquarters in the office building. Oh, that reminds me, Chad. That reminds me. I actually have uh, an inspirational introduction to do as we jump back into big ambitions because we are, we have a we have a burger joint now we have a sweet gift shop so I, I had the AI write up a speech to inspire our new employees and sort of hit the ground running getting everybody pumped uh, to work for our new megacorp which we have to name so here here's what it came up with Welcome to the groundbreaking, earth-shattering, life-altering startup that you've had the great fortune to join. Let us gather here today to celebrate the birth of my, I mean, our, 
brainchild. I must say, when I woke up today, I was filled with immense gratitude. Not for the wonderful team I have assembled, but for the fact that I had the foresight to hire you all. The collective experience and expertise you bring to the table is truly remarkable. Not as remarkable as mine, of course, but still noteworthy. I understand that some of you may feel slightly intimidated working under the awe-inspiring leadership of a visionary like me. It's only natural, given your mortal status. But fear not, for I am a benevolent ruler, and I shall do my best to shepherd you through the treacherous waters of innovation. Now, I want to assure you all that I firmly believe in equal opportunity. Each and every one of you will be given the chance to bask in my glory, learn from my infinite wisdom, and contribute to my success. After all, what greater honor could there be than serving as the cogs in the well-oiled machine that I have so expertly designed? As we embark on this thrilling adventure together, I want you to remember that your sole purpose here is to serve the greater good. And by greater good, I mean the continued expansion of my empire and the satisfaction of my insatiable ambition. Let us not forget that teamwork makes the dream work. So I expect you all to unite in your tireless pursuit of my, I mean, our goals. Rest assured that I will be watching from my throne, offering guidance and the occasional pat on the back when you achieve some semblance of success. In conclusion, my dear subordinates, let us go forth and conquer the world, or at least that small part of it I have so generously allotted to you. Together we shall write history, a history that will forever bear my name, with your contributions forever etched in the footnotes. Now let us raise our glasses to a future filled with triumph under my exceptionally capable and awe-inspiring leadership. Cheers and long live our startup! I think I think that that hits the right all the right notes. Perfect speech. <laughs> this is applicable to every Etal stream, more or less. Yeah. I'd say so. Okay, we need to do... Before we go make our startup, I, I think we should go find the car. <laughs> it's down the street. But, Chad, how many of you guys... Um, hmm, how, how do we do this? If you did not see any of the gameplay yesterday and you have no idea what the hell's going on in this game, people arrive. If you were here yesterday, wave. Or if you know vaguely what's going on in Big Ambitions, do the do a, do a wave. Not not the people wave. I forgot. Not the people arrive. Just a wave. And then the rest of you aren't listening. I didn't say do people buy. But it does have the word wave in the... Okay, I didn't think this through. <sighs> I didn't think this through. I don't know where the gas station is. I'm just going to park in the middle of the road. Um, where is it? <laughs> I don't know how to refuel. It's not a car dealership. Wait, it automatically refueled. Why am I at 99% fuel? Does turning off the game and turning it back on <laughs> refuel your vehicle? We don't need fuel, actually. We're good. It's like real life. Yeah, if I just ignore the problem, it goes away. Okay, hang on. I got a car behind me. Let's just, let's just drive it back, park it. Dude, the light just turned green and there's a pedestrian. <sighs> People in New York, am I right? All right, I need to turn around and park on that side of the road. This pink car is, I'm, I'm making a U-turn. Right, scoot on up, scoot on up. There's a parking spot right in front of my house. I don't even need to parallel park. I can just scooch on in here. Perfect.
What is this game about? Unbridled capitalism. Yeah. Uh, this is not the game's music in the background. This is the. This is just some jams that inspire me. <laughs> uh, I think it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle soundtrack right now. We should eat. Just take some fresh food out of the fridge. You know what? Screw what my uncle told me to do. I'm playing video games for an hour. Now I'm a lot happier. Anyway, chat, those of you that actually did say you, <laughs> you were just people arriving for the first time, uh, this is an early access game that just came out on Steam like five days ago now. And the premise is you start with nothing in the story mode and you have to like, your uncle, it has to be a critique of the nepotism involved in capitalism uh, because your uncle hooks you up with an initial investment of like $10,000 and then hooks you up with a job and then hooks you up with an apartment. It has to be. But uh, we have to start managing our own businesses, basically. And so far, we've got just a small gift shop and a small burger joint, which, by the way, are both really ugly and kind of run down and very dirty right now. We're going to turn that down just a little bit. There we go. But we have this map with a lot of different buildings that we can occupy. Hmm. When can I buy the church? Chad, did they make it intent? Did, did cathedrals intentionally make it so that they were shaped as a cross from above? <laughs> Am I just now learning about this? Become a televangelist. Wait, what? I know, right? How else would God know where to go on Sundays? That's true, yeah. Uh, but yeah, all these buildings are... Not all of them are rentable, but there are many of them that are. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of different random businesses will pop up throughout the game, but there's like four different districts in the city and a whole host of different types of businesses that you can open for real estate. But yeah, game's in early access and it seems like it updates every 60 to 70 days. But your your long-term goal is basically make number go up and have an empire of various self-sustaining businesses. And we're at the phase of the game now where we just made our businesses somewhat profitable and our next goal is to open up an office where we can have a headquarters and manage everything uh, you know, set the books up on everything. Yeah, you also, um, your game is actually over as far as I know when you die. <laughs> you start out at 18 years old. And then you game over when your character passes away. And then your empire is done. Can you have babies? I... I don't know. I just started playing this yesterday. I'm not the developer. <laughs> it's not The Sims. It's not The Sims. Okay. Anyway. Let's look for an office building in the Garment District, which is where our initial businesses are already set up. We need... Uh, office for rent. Uh, okay, this one's privately owned, available for rent. We have 285 meters squared or 660. Let's go for one of the small ones. Chow, what do you... Th <sighs> Let's get this one. This one's right across the street from our burger joint and right down the road from our gift shop. Daily rent is $64 with a $2,600 deposit. This one's 71, so it's a little bit more expensive. It's a, li it's a little far on the corner of town, but it's on the same street as our businesses. 
Let's let's go ahead and rent this one. Okay, so let's go visit the new office. But yeah, it's got like a lovable amount of jank in the game so far. <laughs> I think it's only like twenty dollars on Steam, and it's um not going to be a fully complete simulation or anything like that. Like, your your workers are basically, as far as I can tell, uh, robots who just appear and uh, disappear when needed and stuff like that. But for, for what it is, it's, like, surprisingly fun. It's fun enough to play for a second day of stream, let's say. I got big ambitions. Imagine having a worker at your burger place. I'm gonna work on that, okay? But I, where did my... I just have to pay a huge deposit on this office building, so my money's gone. But this is the new office. 15th Ave. Lots and lots of fluorescent lights. Big, empty, wooden nothingness. This is our new HQ. Are you going to become a burger lawyer? Yes. Okay, open a headquarters in your new office building. New business. HQ, law firm, or web development agency. Well, we need to come up with a name for the HQ. The office is the size of both your other properties combined. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have... Enough furniture for that. Why did you get a massive HQ? Because we have room for growth, okay? We're thinking towards the future. We're not just gonna, um... Buy within our means, and then, what, a year, two years go by? And then we need to, like, buy a new office building? For $20, this game is great. I encourage everyone to support this great little dev team. Nice try, developer in disguise. Not gonna work on us. We're too smart for that. First time chatter. Somebody get that dev. Okay, we need we need a HQ bu business name. Chat, let's help us out. We need we have um I want to rename Patties Patties as well. I'm not I'm not happy with that. Let's ask let's ask the bot. <sighs> Give a name to a headquarters office building for a successful startup company that sells burgers and gifts, both cheap and expensive. AI says, uh, welcome to Burger Bounty Tower. The illustrious headquarters of our thriving startup that has masterfully combined the worlds of scrumptious burgers and eclectic gifts, catering to both the frugal and the extravagant. Burger Bounty Tower. There we go. Can you ask it to make an alliteration? I mean, it, it just did, but... Can you rename that using alliteration? Certainly. Introducing Burger Bizarre Bonanza. Yeah, I don't like that one as much. How about a list of names? Of course. Here's a list of alliterative names for the headquarters of a startup company that sells burgers and gifts. <laughs> Gourmet Gifts Galore. Bounty Burger Boutique, Feast Finders Fort, Tasty Treasures Tower, Savory Surprises Sanctuary. 
I don't know if I want savory surprises. Palette presence. <laughs> okay. I kind of like palette presence. <laughs> uh, flavor favors fortress. Feast finders. Feast finders fort. Sorry, ghost face killer. I don't want to get DMCA'd. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's do... Chad likes Feast Finders. So what do we got here? <clears throat> we have an office. With no furniture, no computers, no managers. The logo is randomized and I'm not going to redo it right now. Am I I'm going to do it. Let's do it. Fine. Okay, first of all, change the logo color. That background of green is... incredibly... bright. Uh, what about the font? If you have a green background, that is like, um, you are a renewable energy company. If you're blue, then you probably... have some kind of shipping thing going on, right? Uh, red... It's kind of a pastel, but red is more like fast food and food adjacent. Yellow feels like charity to me. This light blue is more... cruise liner? Or tech? Yeah. Purple is like... really out there. Red is literally proven to make people feel hungry. Okay, I want something readable on here. I don't I think the the white is probably all we got. <laughs> okay. We got fridges, the scales of justice. These are beautiful. So many flowers. Uh, table, the save icon. That actually is cargo. Living room furniture. Ah, that's jewelry. Tape. I don't know, I might just, that's like office supplies though. I might just go with generic stonks. Well, we're feast finders. The magnifying glass. <laughs> or the target? The target reticle? This is, this is pretty perfect, but I also like, I don't know why, why are we targeting our customers? Okay, yeah, let's go with feast finders. Right there, perfect. That's our HQ. Save. That looks different than it does over here. Okay, let's go with it. Congratulations on your new headquarters. This is where the top employees of your organization will be seated. But first, we have to start hiring. We need a purchasing agent to help us secure some import contracts. This is gonna be the emptiest, saddest office building. Hire a purchasing agent. Place a desk in your HQ and attach the computer and the chair to the desk. Chat, should I just take the computer out of my own office so I can save money? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm, I think I'm just gonna dump the computer from my apartment in here because I don't have enough cash. I'm broke, dude. Okay. So to hire a purchasing agent, I need to uh, call up. We don't have enough money to do that. Here's what we're gonna do. Let's go work, let's open up the burger joint. Where are the burgers? There's only three burgers? Okay, I, I thought that there were more. 
Load the burgers. <laughs> Alright, I'm opening shop. Saturday, we are... It's 3.20. Alright, I'm just gonna work till midnight. It's open, dude. I'm here. I gotta, I gotta try and sell burgers. This is actually, we just, we still need two <laughs> chairs. This is this big table, and uh, only two people can sit in it. This is the sketchy burger shop that has cleaning supplies in the back. Uh, guests are, guests are encouraged to go to the bathroom, and then once they're done in the bathroom, take a mop or something, and then clean up after themselves, because we can't afford to hire anybody to clean the bathrooms for us. Yeah, it's supposed to be, like, dirty in here, isn't it? Alright, hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta, I gotta clean up real quick. It's, it's kind of stinky in here. We're gonna hire some more people soon. Once I can afford to. I don't know where the dirtiness is. Unclear. Alright, 95% is fine. All right, we're back. We made some cash. Uh, we sold like 60 burgers. And it's time to go. I <laughs> can't. Okay. How wild is it to just have a burger shop? Like, imagine you lived on this street. Okay? And there's a burger shop that's like open sometimes. You know, whenever, whenever the owner decides to show up. Their scheduling on the front window is like, yeah, whenever I feel like it, just keep, just check back later. Almost like a streamer. Almost like a streamer who I, I may sometimes put like, oh, the stream will be Saturday or Sunday. Like, I don't know, whenever. And you go, you go all the way to the shop and just find out that the streamer owns it. Those are the best. No sinks for the employees. Kind of true. Speaking of running your own restaurant, um, this game is actually making me feel like I missed the train. I want to play a train game too, but I feel like I may have missed the train. Should I go back and, and uh, play that restaurant managing game? Because like this, this game has put me in a like simulation game mood and managing stuff mood. And I might explore other options. Okay, I love how I'm like, that one game, and chat's like, this one? <laughs> and every person has listed a different game. That's great, the genre is massive. Uh, I need to park right there. Okay, um... You know what, I'm already here. Not the best parking job, but it's totally legal. Alright, let me see what you guys said. King of Retail? Overcooked? Pl played up? Maybe played up. I did not... I haven't played any of these, but it might be played up. Time for some X4. Well, there's an X4 DLC coming out soon, and I, I'm thinking about jumping back into X4 when that comes out because I didn't play the other DLCs either so I might just I might just do all of them why am I here I made money okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna sleep wake up at just before nine yeah I know plate up's not really a simulation but it's a rest it's a restaurant manager still Um, okay, purchasing agent. We gotta make a call. You can go visit this in person, but we've already been there. We need to do recruitment? Let's give them a call. We're looking for Feast Finders Fort, Prime... Wait. Chad, is this how we hire a purchasing agent? Or is this, am I think is this a different thing? Oh, I go to City Workforce. Alright, I'm just gonna do what the objective tells me. 
Let's go. Let's just follow the the icons. What kind of entrepreneur gets up at 9 a.m.? Are you on the grind or not? Are you on the grind? What kind of grind set is this? Okay, all right. I was looking at chat. The light just turned green. Relax. I need to find a new soundtrack. Let's let's do SimCity again. Because that went well. Let's, uh, speaking of SimCity, I've been wanting to play, like, some of that as well. Heroes in the half shell. Mm, let's do SimCity 4. I'd so be for a SimCity 2013. You would so be? A successful entrepreneur can get up whenever they please. That's true. Like, a unsuccessful entrepreneur has to rise and grind, but a successful entrepreneur has already ri risen and grinded by default. If you think about it. Yeah, let the money work for me. Oh, I gotta stop reading chat. Talks, what's your favorite SimCity game? Well, considering I haven't played um, anything between SimCity 2000 and SimCity 2013, I would go with um, SimCity 2013. <laughs> because SimCity 2000 was great, but SimCity 2000 existed for one reason, and that reason is to push all of the disaster buttons in cheat mode and watch what happened. Uh, I didn't actually ever play the game. I just watched aliens come murder everybody. Over and over again. People arrive. Hello, people arrivers. What's up, Dorito? And more. Uh, can you still play SimCity 2013 to this day? Like, is that is that a playable game? Go! This is real New York. This is real New York driving right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. They turned off the essential always online servers. They open in 21 hours? They, wait a second, they're only open at eight? No, 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 wait, 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 is it the weekend? It's Sunday. They're closed on Sundays. I drove all... This is too realistic, man. I drove all the way down here. I gotta go eat. Is there food nearby? Let's, let's look for some food. This is, um... Occupied. Capital building. Residential. Okay. Let me look for <laughs> Fast food, I guess. It's down the road, dude. Alright. I'm going. I can't, yeah, I can't just sleep in the car for 21 hours. Oh, Larry Ralph Corp owns uh, this Gastronomitalia. My favorite, my favorite competition to my own restaurant restaurant. I'm gonna get the burger and I'm gonna get the french fries. There's, I, every time. I was the first person in the store. Now I'm the fifth in line. They ordered online. Leave bad reviews. I, okay. 
there have actually been a number of incidents in real life that I have debated whether I should create uh -huh. like a secret alternative Google account just so that I can leave burner reviews on restaurants without the restaurant being able to like do any like it would just be a random name my fear is that like sometimes the orders that I make are specific enough that I feel like if you leave a, re a restaurant review like the day of somebody sees it and is like I remember that guy I know who that is. And next time they come into my restaurant, you know, like, I don't, that's what I'm afraid of. So I feel like I need to, I need to write a review, but save it and delay it so that they've already forgotten about me. Cause it wasn't like the night of, and then leave the review afterwards. And then there's no way they're going to remember me like two weeks later. If I leave the restaurant. leaves a bad review and goes back. Okay, because sometimes, chat, sometimes places change over time. And this happened to me recently. And I've unfortunately had to be start crossing different restaurants and, and coffee shops and stuff off of my list because formerly great go-to spots have started slacking and have gotten worse over time. So like the reason I would go back is because it's like, oh, it's been two months. It's been three months. We we haven't been back to this coffee shop that we used to love until they started to disintegrate. Let's go try it again and see if maybe they uh, found their former glory. I'm throw my paper bag away. We need to, what do we, let's, I guess we, it's already three. I'm just gonna go play computer games in my apartment. I don't remember how to get home from here. I've had customers that come every day, leave bad reviews, and continue coming. Dude, traffic! What are you guys doing down here? <laughs> the true- Oh, dude, the station! Okay, so here's where it is. Or here's where one of them is. I can buy a jerry can? For 30 bucks? I don't know if that's necessary, because it's going to take up one spot in my car. And sometimes you need all eight, to be honest. Okay, I wanted to read some more chat responses. I worked for a place that did that. We do check. See? Next time they come into my restaurant, they're getting frozen fish. <laughs> Why is this game a life simulator? That's the best part about it. Like, obviously, it's not as detailed as I want it to be for a life simulator, but these are the kind of games that I want to be... I want, like, a AAA version of a life simulator that isn't The Sims. So we need to keep heading south. Can you commit tax fraud? I don't know. The jerry can is more for when you need to get a taxi to the gas station because you run out. Ah, oh, that makes sense. If you if you <laughs> if you let your car go empty, you have to resuscitate it with a jerry can. That's funny. You can import cheap foreign goods. Yeah, that's what we're we're trying to import cheap goods now and cut out the middleman. That's why we're setting up an office building. Uh, I gotta hire a purchasing agent, but I can't hire a purchasing agent. I'm gonna cut this guy off. I need to be in the left lane. You don't have to follow the traffic laws in this game, but. It's more, if you're gonna play a life simulator and you're not gonna RP a little bit, then what's the point, I think? Plus it gives me a second to rechat. Hey, I found my way home. 
Okay, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna waste time today, I think. Cause it's already six. So there's not really much time to work if I go to the burger place. How how parking work? Like that actually. I loved Herbs Sims in the City back in the day. I never played Herbs. Oh, this actually is a good time to load this up. Um, we're, this is the last time we get to play computer games for a while. <laughs> it's very sad. Because we're packing up chair. We're packing up computer. We're packing up table. So sad. And we're putting them all in the trunk. They're going to the office. I don't want to spend money on uh, another computer table and chair if I don't have to right now. My uncle says that entrepreneurs must subscribe to this channel. Accurate, true, and even a little based. All right, we're gonna just... You know what? I'm gonna rise and grind after a quality nine and a half hour sleep. Why is he moving? Yeah, we lost $344 because I didn't go work the burgers. We gotta hire an employee for that, dude. Who else goes there? Thanks, New Fire, for the 18 months. Welcome back for a year and a half. Narfwack as well. Appreciate the tier ones up. Smile for fun says, hey. Hey. Hello, T. Walrus. Who says, yo. Paul Mass dropping a 63rd month. Such ambition. I try. I try. Uh, what up also, Trolls for a 14th month? Uh, thanks for priming. Whoop. Thanks for dropping the $5 sub. And Brew Lord, welcome back for 38. Hey guys, thanks for supporting the stream. Okay, we should, let's eat some food. We still got four fresh food. All right, I'm gonna head back to the work city workforce. They should be open in by eight, I think. Okay, uh, anyway, what were we talking about a second ago? Before I got distracted by the... <laughs> texting and driving? Not tax fraud, no. Not tax fraud. Oh! Uh, games that are sort of life simulations. Like, I... I think that life simulation style games are the future to some extent. I think that deeper simulations that also gamify aspects of modern life are, are going to be the big games after a while. Like, I just, here's why. I just don't think that the things that are popular now, I just don't think that they're gonna be popular forever. Like, I just don't see shooters maintaining their absolute chokehold on gaming as a whole. I think um, Call of Duty, for example, has just shown that they're, to they're so out of ideas that they're just remaking the older games over again, you know? Like literally remaking them. And I think eventually, they can't remake the remakes. I think that one of the reasons why um, shooters have su Okay, I forgot that this light doesn't work. Uh, I think that one of the reasons that shooters right now have such a, a dominant player base is because they have a captive audience. And what I mean is that the majority of free-to-play games are pew-pew games. 
And I think that once people figure out how to release games to the masses that are free to play, but monetizable, that are different genres, I think that they will start to see success instead. Because I think that it is uh, not really a conscious decision on the part of most people to get into a lot of the games that people are into by and large. I think it's a product of not having other choices. If they don't want to spend money. And then the people who don't want to spend money blow up the games that are free to play. And the people that do want to spend money, whether it's Marvel Snap or Fortnite or whatever else, have things to spend money on. And you get the dopamine addiction from five to ten minute short intervals. Brevity. MMOs and mobile games are much bigger in the free-to-play market. You think that they're bigger than Fortnite? Has been? I don't think so. I would say that Minecraft and Fortnite... Uh, Minecraft wasn't free, but it was on every single platform that's ever been made, including refrigerators. Fortnite is a mobile game, you tell. Yes, making, making games that then are ported to phones is... Uh, tantamount to a mobile game, sure. Almost all games are mobile games. Because your phone is as big as a frickin' computer. Okay? It is one. I got news for you. Y your your giant-ass uh, LCD LED screen that doesn't even fit in your pocket anymore is just a computer that you take with you. You're in one. Hello, recruitment agent. Welcome to City Workforce. What type of employee are you looking to hire? Uh, Feast Finders Fort Purchasing Agent. Age group doesn't matter. Just give me two candidates. I need to save some money. But all I have to do is just go work the burgers. I'd rather just wait one day, to be honest. Let's be in a hurry. Okay. Meanwhile, we can go put the desk into other things in the office. Interestingly, Google doesn't know what the most played games in the world are, but don't get lost in the weeds. The point is, when game developers figure out how to stimulate dopamine in widely accessible, downloadable ways that are not um, free-to-play MOBAs, free-to-play battle royales, or free-to-play... Uh, most MMOs are free-to-play now, too. That's the secret. Where the... Where does this road go? This is... I don't know where I am, dude. We don't usually come to this side of the city. Kind of took a roundabout way. But yeah, I think a lot of people, um, like it, it's hard to live outside of the now because first of all, video games have not been around very long. <laughs> and by any metric that you use to measure, right? Um, you can use our lifetime to measure at best, uh, but certainly, 
don't honk at me, first of all. Like, computers and video games have, have barely registered on the human radar right now. And even of that period of time, we have only been playing, like, first-person shooters in the modern sense, not even for my entire lifetime, okay? Because in my lifetime, those originated by being little pop-up shooters, like Time Crisis um, and Area 51, where you just hold a light gun, point it at the screen, and pew-pew. And now that's evolved into an entire genre of other shooters, right? And that's just in my lifetime we've already switched there. Not to mention MMOs obviously didn't exist pre-internet, uh, which I had the fortune of growing up during the infancy of the internet. So I got to see those develop from the thin air. And we, what I'm saying is we can't know what will be popular in five years, much less ten. Because the forces that are dominant right now have not been, in the grand scheme of things, dominant for that long. They're, they're very recent additions. Okay, where the hell am I? I'm on the right street. Then why are you saying it won't be shooters? Uh, because it wasn't shooters... Because, because things, it, it, it'd be like somebody playing Pac-Man or Pong and being like, this is the future. This is it, dude. We have achieved the pinnacle of entertainment. <laughs> it has already changed and will do again. I don't think that's that controversial. We thought Pong was the future when it happened. Okay, I need to place a computer, a desk, and a chair. Which is in my car. Computer. Oh, I don't have anything to help carry this in. Well, should have taken the computer first. What else is in here? Oh, we do have a hand truck. Well, there you go. That's just sitting inside. Okay, we can just move all this around momentarily. This is so sad. The computer was on top in the trunk. That's why I can take it in first. But the the key to having, um, I guess, viral is the word, but for lack of a better term, mega successful world-dominating franchises, the first step is accessibility. I think we can all agree that whether it is or isn't at this very moment, at some point, Minecraft was the most played game in the world. Right? And I don't consider Minecraft a first-person shooter. No, it's Sonic. You think that Sonic has just permanently been the most played game concurrently at every point in gaming history? That's interesting. I once mocked Minecraft until I played it 12 plus hours the first time. <laughs> Uh, 
That's usually how it goes, yeah. Okay, let's put... I have no idea. I'm just going to make this... Like, we're only going to have one office employee. So whoever comes to visit us is going to have to walk all the way to the back. Just, a, just in a very long straight line. Where the, the person who is ready to greet them is going to be all the way up against the glass here. Have you asked chat GPT these questions? What questions? The whole reason that this topic came up is because what I said was, I think that uh, life simulation as a genre has the potential to become among the biggest game genres in the entire world if done properly with enough depth and replayability. Okay, we need to hire the purchasing agent and assign them to the workstation. But we have to get the um, potential representatives first. Like they have to, they have to share with me the the hiring choices. If you believe Wikipedia, PUBG is the most played game of all time. You can also see on that Wikipedia page that it says this data has not been updated in a few years, and that they don't have uh, a source right now. To be fair, Sims has always been one of the most popular games as well. No matter how terrible Sims 4 is, it's still a top seller. Yeah, that, that is true as well. I actually think that um, the potential is definitely there for things like AI to help with life simulations because a, a, a big component of games like the one that we're playing right now are formulas behind the scenes, right? There are formulas that are in place to determine, for example, whether a rival business takes up a residence next to your business. And in a, in a game like this right now, it's it's fairly arbitrary and random and doesn't really have uh, directives. And obviously those can be hard-coded in, but it has been interesting to see <laughs> AI actively code things, whether they're s completely simplistic or not. Um, it would be funny to see a formula that could change depending on circumstances that occur in your given simulation game, for example. Change the rules as you play, so to speak. Okay, we are... Uh, it's almost midnight. I guess I need to go home, not to my burger business. I think I actually just drove... Did I just drive in a huge circle? Yeah, I've just been cruising. <laughs> cruising and chatting. I have altered the game rules. Pray I do not alter them any further. Where is my gift shop? Where's my house? Dude, I took... I, I still haven't... Is, I know what street my apartment is on, but I can't read street signs from this, like, bird's eye view, so I'm just going. It's midnight cruising, okay? The police can't stop me now. 
it's actually better if you come up the road this way anyway. Because uh, then you can just park on the side. I'm home. I just did nine hours? All right, let's wake up a little early. I think we made some profit yesterday. Is this a midnight club stream now? <laughs> Let's actually... I'm curious now. What is the biggest game in China? Uh, I don't know where you can get good information on this. Uh, I can see top grossing games, but that's not... Grossing is not the same as played. Uh, and this is just mobile games. Okay, well, according to a uh, um, published article from March 2nd, is this month, Honor of Kings is the highest grossing and it's not even close. Like, we're looking at a difference of 113 million dollars in monthly what okay we got a new message we were waiting on that 113 million dollars in monthly revenue and then PUBG mobiles after that at 48 so honor of kings is over two times as much uh revenue from february 2023 if this is accurate and honor of kings is a moba And then third is Genshin Impact, which is only one million behind PUBG. And then half of that is Egg Party, which of course I know. Fantasy Westward Journey, then Three Kingdom Tactics. Mobile games are still games, chat. Yeah, I don't... Okay, I, I typed in what is the biggest game in China, and then I changed China to USA. And uh, when I clicked, when I when I searched China, it immediately went to games and mobile game statistics. And when I switched out China for USA, it went to football. <laughs> it, it just went straight to sports, which I feel like says a lot about the cultural differences between the two places. Search engine optimization. Yeah, I guess so. <clears throat> okay. Do we believe... What is the biggest video game in USA? Right now. Right now. Depends on who you ask. I'm seeing number one Minecraft still. from a couple different places. Uh, three of them say Minecraft still. And then many of them follow that up with either Fortnite or um, uh, Modern Warfare. So. Minecraft is the new Pinball 3D. Only boomers will know. Assign the purchasing agent to the workstation. Okay, first things first. Who is my potential recruit? Eloise Miller. Uh, $17 hourly wage. What is stump mesh office chair medium? What does that mean? Like she wants an office chair? <laughs> I have a dining chair. Space Cadet Pinball? Hell yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if I have a choice. I'm just gonna hire this person. I don't have a mesh chair. I have a I have a basic office chair. That's all I got. Eloise, I'm gonna assign you. Do you need a uniform? I'm just gonna say default. Feast finders. Once a stump mesh office chair has a demand, and uh, only fifty percent satisfied. Okay, go to biz, man. Wait, does she need to be assigned to the workstation? Yeah. I don't know how to do that. How do I open... Do I have to go to the office? She's not currently assigned to any tasks. Typically what you do is you go to BizMan, you click on the business... And then you can schedule them in from here. Oh, hang on, hang on. Where? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my stuff. It's just on a different list. So we need to schedule you. You can work eight to four, eight hour days. That's fine. Eloise Miller is now assigned 40 hour work week, $17 an hour, and we're done. Ah, progress. Your first operational employee working from your brand new headquarters. Starting to sound pretty fancy, huh? Now. We need to get your purchasing agent working. But first, we need a place to store all your imported products. Okay, we, before we do any of this, Uncle Fred, I need to get somebody working the burgers. We need to get somebody working the burgers. Let's get a let's get a recruitment. What type of employee are you looking to hire? I'm looking to hire somebody for Patty's Patties. Customer service. One candidate, one day, $500, go. Somebody's got to work the patties. Um, Griff shop is dirty. Let's go, let's go tidy up. The business is closed. Tip, you can... Oh, I didn't mean to click on that. Is Italic CEO yet? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just opened my own office building. I'm getting ready to rent a warehouse with a pallet shelf. With, with storage. We're getting there. Why not two employees in the burger shop? Because I gotta pay them. Why, why pay employees when I can simply go and tidy up right now and save money? Okay, we don't have that much cash. I have $4,000 in my bank account. Just make one employee do the work of two employees. Isn't that what everyone else does? Why Why should I be any different in this capitalism simulator? Now you're thinking like a manager. <laughs> Oops, wrong button. Okay. All clean. How are we doing, Tristan? Stock of expensive gifts is low. Cheap gifts is low. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Um, unfortunately, we kind of have two choices. We can, we can go get some more stock, or we can work the burgers today. Can't do both. I think let's work burgers. Let's work the burgers, then tomorrow, with the money we made, we go do all this stuff at the same time. Just take care of everything. Yeah, let's work the burger. But yeah. Uh, okay, anyways. Dude, I, I want to see more in the genre of life simulation. So I'm glad, I'm glad Paradox is making a competitor to The Sims. I'm glad that EA is making a new Sims so we can have another, you know, uh, 50 expansion packs. <laughs> but I, I'd also like to see some innovation in the genre. 
And I think a lot of that innovation uh, comes actually, in my opinion, less... Like, obviously, the core gameplay loop is important, but I, I think for it to be a simulation, it needs to be believable. And a lot of that is the behind-the-scenes stuff that happens, right? Like, you need, um... What's today? Tuesday? You need, for example, to have an ebb and flow. Like, it's fairly easy to simulate, say, supply and demand, where it's like, oh, there's too much of a product in this area, therefore demand is low, so you need to drive prices down to compete, right? However, I think for that to continue to work, it can't be so basic of a simulation. Like, for example, even, um, like, Slime Rancher has that level. But being able to make... Uh, a simulation where you're not just like, oh, you sold this much, therefore drive prices down or the demand is high. Like having rival businesses actually try to compete for property with you. Make it more cutthroat, you know? There's a great corner spot in town and, and somebody took it. Now you've got to do like a hostile takeover of that company and try to absorb them once your business gets bigger than theirs. Like... Making it more dynamic, where it updates itself over time and doesn't just sort of stay on a on a static seesaw of up and down. I'm hyped for Sims 5 because I heard it'll have multiplayer. That would be pretty sweet. That would be really cool. All right, my character is tired and hungry. I'm going to I'm going to clean up first. Tidy up and then close shop. Hello comrade Wilson, how's it going? But yeah, um games that do have a, a good economic simulation model, the X series does. That is true. Kind of a different style of game. Different kind of life simulation there. But the, the more broad in scope the given game is, the harder all of that becomes, right? It all comes back to Lemonade Stand. <laughs> Simple. Elegant. It all comes back to Lemonade Stand. Focused. <sighs> I guess... No, we'll clean Griff Shop when we come back. Simple, clean, elegant, like a like a menu at a Gordon Ramsay restaurant. Can't have too many things on the menu. Don't sleep for nine hours, please. Let's go six hours. Bing, bing. Okay, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. We have money in the bank. We got six grand. We got storage in the Hansa Mimic. You know what time it is. It's time to hit the appliance store. Where is... Ah, that, this one. Is this the drive-in? No, that's not the... Where's the... What's the drive-in store? Is it a... That's Ikea. Or, excuse me, it's not Ikea. What's... Uh, oh, this is the drive-in warehouse, the wholesale. There we go. The distro center. This is the next strand type of game. I think a lot of people who play The Sims only play The Sims. Well, The Sims is designed as that, right? They they release so much stuff that if you like The Sims, you can just sit in that little cocoon and never come out because there is so much, so much to spend your money on and so much 
uh, additional fluff content to put in your game. It's just an entire little ecosystem bubble. They make it like that on purpose. Okay, this is the drive-in uh, distribution center. So we can actually just take the car in here. Which I am doing primarily... Do they sell burgers in here? Oh, they do. Okay. We're just going to load up on some stock. You know what? Give me a reason to drive the forklift. <laughs> I've been looking for an excuse. Did I just buy 600 burgers? Okay, I didn't buy them yet. That's more burgers than I was looking for. All right, we're gonna, um, never mind. No forklift, that's too much. Are you forklift certified? How do you, th how do you think you get forklift certified? You have to drive it. Okay, we're gonna buy 300 burgers. We're gonna buy a thousand dollars worth of expensive gifts and a thousand dollars of cheap gifts. Then I want to buy some paper bags, which I swear we're right here. There we go. Let's buy two hundred paper, two thousand paper bags. Alright. You know what? I'm gonna borrow the hand truck. And we're full up. How much? This is 2250. This is a good investment, though. Noom. <laughs> I would hate to work here. And if I was the boss, I would not put my desk there. There's, there's a car exhaust just floating, just wafting. Also, I like that they couldn't mirror these checkout counters, so they're, one of them is just, you have to put your stuff here and it goes, goes that way. All right, and off we go. Back to our businesses. Stock them up. Right on Red Chat, it's not illegal. Ooh, big truck. Hello, Brynjör Bjorn. This tablet is slow. Typing on tablets is just annoying anyways, if you don't have one of those little fold-out keyboards. Like, it doesn't matter how new the tablet is, the keyboard takes up the entire screen, and you have to hold it somehow. So your choices are, put the tablet in a in a holding receptacle thing that, that can just prop it up for you, and then you have to, like, type like this. Or you hold it up with, with one hand, and you just have to, like, artisanally select each letter. Gifts, paper bags, gifts. Like a, like a painter with a brush. Just put it in your lap. Well, then you're just like... <laughs> <sighs> I'm here. I've got stock. We've got cheap gifts. We've got paper bags. We're going to get all this organized, but not now. <laughs> Let's refill the expensive gifts ourselves. Oof. Oof. Uh, I need to clean this place up, too. Until we can hire some cleaning staff. Which I'm going to do soonish. How are we doing on sodas? We have plenty. Nobody buys sodas here. Where is it dirty? It's only doing 1% cleanliness. Yeah, I'm stuck at 93. What about you? Are you dirty? Tristan? You are. 
You're stinky. Alright, we got 97. My work here is done. Griff shop is dirty and needs to be cleaned. Shut up. It is so clean. I just cleaned it myself. Oh, I forgot the hand truck. <laughs> oh, well. This is New York. Buy a Roomba. I have a Roomba in real life. And it works, but it also doesn't. Like, I have a I have a carpet that is in my office here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, that's that's not it. That's Midas the dog. Um, but it's kind of got, like... It's, a, it's an Ikea rug. I have an Ikea rug. And because of the, the bumps that are on the rug, it doesn't really vacuum it at all. But it's, it's good enough for, like, solid floors and really flat rugs. So for those things, it does a, it does a good enough job. I think the, the nicest thing about the Roomba is it'll get things, like, 80% clean. It just won't reach the, like tight corners and hard to reach places, but for someone like me, I would manually vacuum an entire house, like, super infrequently compared to the Roomba. Like, I can run the Roomba once a week, and, and being able to do that, or even twice a week if you wanted, being able to keep things 80 to 85% clean, semi-permanently, is better than everything being 100% clean once every two months. If that makes sense. Okay, I got paper bags and I got the cheese borg. No one works here. Oh, dude, we have a we have a uh, potential. I need to check my messages. The recruitment agency. We found you a new candidate. Nancy Smith, 31% customer service. She wants to be part-time. What is part-time in this game? <laughs> um, she's 61. She's going to be serving burgers. But she's hired. That's all I got. Okay, Bizman, Patty's Patties, let's find out. Scheduling. Uh, demands part, let me actually just check my employees. 50% satisfaction. Wants and demands between 10 and 30 hours a week. Okay, we can, we can pencil that in. So 30 hours a week. We're gonna open uh, five days a week. Let's say Monday's off, and we're open on Saturday. You want the burger joint to be open on Saturday, right? Maybe like six hours a day? No, that's 42 hours a week? What? No, that's 30 hours a week. Okay, that's what I thought. What was up with that number? <sighs> okay, shared schedule for all days. Cash register, 30 hours a week. That's the max part-time. Uh, let's have it open one to seven. That's such a small window to eat. Like late lunch, early dinner. Your burger place closes at 6 p.m. I guess let's open it like three then. Let's open it three. Yeah, and then close at 9. That's more reasonable. Close for lunch at the burger place? Okay, we get, we need a new... Um, 
create a list of names for an up and coming burger joint using alliteration. One, Bountiful Burgers. Two, Brilliant Burger Bistro. Three, Beefy Bliss. Four, Bodacious Burger Bonanza. Five, Burger Buddies Bungalow. Six, Battleborn Burgers. Seven, Big Bite Burger Booth. Eight, Bun Believers Burgers. Nine, Burger Bash Bites. And number 10, Burger Beacon Bistro. Uh, it's gotta be Beefy Bliss. <laughs> Brosidon Burger. <laughs> now do it again, but with a flare, but with, but in the... Now do it again, but they are all themed after Grind Set Bros. One, Bro Bites Burger. Two, Gaines Grill Gourmet. Three, Hustle House Hamburgers. Oh, damn. That's, that's a real winner. Four, Alpha Appetite Arena. Five, Braun Burgers Bar. Six, Flex Fuel Feast. Seven, Power Patties Pub. Eight, Burger Bench Bistro. Nine, Muscle Munchies. Uh, 10, Protein Pack Palace. Hustle House has got to be it. Hustle House is it. Those are all good, though. Those are all, uh, AI is the future. Okay. Um, let's rename. Once I figure out how. Hustle House Burgers. Fast food. Uh, we can change this. <laughs> Okay, our icon is a hot dog. Is it possible to sell tacos in this game? Very important question. I don't know. There's different food types, though. We got pizza, hot dogs, hamburg, salad, coffee, beans. I don't think you, I don't know if you can sell tacos. Yeah, we can probably upload our own files if we wanted to, because these are like um, Microsoft Word, Word art level. These are definitely Word art. Hot dog for burger place sounds perfect. Okay. Um, they probably need more generic symbols in the game. <sighs> Chad, I'm tempted to use, like, this. Because think of the gains. You know? Think of the gains. Perfectly balanced. We can we can use this for a different thing. Burgers only go up. Burger stonks. Alright, fine. I'm just gonna use the stupid burger symbol. Uh let's change the logo. To red, the text to white, and the background, oof, this is rough. <laughs> we need like a color wheel. We need like a palette to pick from. These don't complement. And there's not enough choices. What's the plus? There's a color wheel for, wait, there is a, Hang on, there is a color wheel? Oh, there is a color wheel. Oh, there is. Okay. Oh no, I just added the colors. I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> that added it to all of them. But you have to. 
Let's go for like a uh, orange. Okay, not that orange. Different orange. Now let's use that for the logo, cause like buns. Is that Burger King? Hang on, what? Halloween burgers. This is like uh, what a burger. All right, that's that, that, that's just gonna be it. Lock it. I don't think that's what I see over here. <laughs> These don't aren't the same. It's the same picture, is it though? Okay, regardless, what are we doing? Oh, I just hired somebody. Hell yeah. So the store can actually be open now. There's some burgers. There's some burgers. We are well stocked. Okay, but when I say like, my dream is simulation games with even more simulation. Having to keep stock of your burgers, your paper bags, and whatever other product you want to sell, it's great. But now I want to have to think about buns. I want to have to think about lettuce. Do we, like, what is my burger recipe and how does it compare to the competition, you know? Are we mayo burgers? Do we need to go ahead and buy mayo in bulk? Do we have lettuce, tomato, mayo? Or are we more like pickle, onion, mustard, ketchup? You know, which one are we? That's a manager's job, false. Well, if we want to have a brand, we need to have a brand identity. And that brand identity needs to be consistent across all future expansions to this particular, um, you can't read that at all, huh? You can't read Hustle House. That's just, <laughs> that's just a yellow light. Hmm. Well, we might need to tweak that, unfortunately. I don't think the custom color schemes are going to work for us. This is, this is bold. This is a bold design decision. <sighs> this looks like something else. Why did I, who, where am I? Oh, there's a flower store? Oh, flowers. How cute. All right, let's leave. Chat, you guys are saying things I'm going to ignore. <laughs> I need to go rent a, I need to rent a small warehouse now that somebody is working in Hustle House. Um. Ooh, we got three warehouses to choose from here. This one's closed, 75 meters squared, 96, 225, oh. 1200? Hold on. Am I clicking on the wrong buildings? No, this is... Oh, 690 meters. I must have clicked on the office. That's a truck garage. Oh. Yeah, I'm clicking on the wrong buildings. Well, we're kind of like concentrated in the southeast corner, aren't we? So I'm just going to continue that trend. I want the corner lot. This one is baked into another building. Let's take the corner lot. That's a three... That's all of my money, basically. It's all of my money. Daily rent, $92. <sighs> rent a small warehouse. Buy at least one pallet shelf. Place the pallet shelf in your warehouse. Buy one storage shelf and place that too. Buy the whole damn building. I can't. Okay. There you go. Drive a vehicle through the warehouse garage to assign it 
a slot, and you can you can assign a driver too. Okay, this is kind of cool. My money's gone. That's not cool, but we may have to wait until some more income rolls in. But we did also just spend a few grand on stock for the. Um, I just ran that red light for the gift shop and the burgers. So at least we'll have residual income continue to uh, trickle in for us. Any games you have plans playing after this one? No, there are no video games. Video games are canceled. They have stopped being developed and produced. Okay, there's this 1440 for his storage shelf. Where is a pallet shelf? That's three. I have to get $1,440. Okay, well, now I know how much to save up. I might just leave my car parked here and just walk back home. Burger Place is only open six hours a day right now. We could hire somebody else, but I have to pay up front for the recruiter. So we don't have that money. I was watching, um, I was hanging out yesterday or something. Is it yesterday or the day before? In Splattercat's channel, and he basically said the same thing. That this is the longest dry period of interesting new things coming out. Not that there are zero, but the number is so low that from a content creator perspective, it is. This, this is probably, I agree, the longest drought. Like 2023 is off to a very bad, boring start, all things considered. It like, it, we're three months in now. Only a thousand dollars profit is because the new employee. Are we still using the bathroom down the street? Yeah. Is there blackjack in this? There should be. There really should be. <sighs> Chat, I'm gonna tell you how bad it is. Do you know how bad it is? I'm not even talking about just like, oh, what do I stream? Oh, what would I make YouTube videos on? I'm talking about just in general. Uh, it's so bad right now that I have started playing Uncharted again, like Uncharted 1. Because I, I just, I, I go sit on the couch, boot up the PlayStation on the TV, and I'm like, you know what? I'm bored as hell. I never played Uncharted 2 or 3 or 4. I I guess I'll go back and play the first one again. So that's where I'm at. And I'm about 60% through Uncharted 1. And that's what I'm doing in my free time because I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> and uh, I'm like... <sighs> The other thing I'm doing is I'm replaying God of War, the 2018 one again. So I'm probably not even close to halfway through that one. Uh, because I'm like, I may as well play Ragnarok, I guess. But that was a last year game. Trying to even find a game to do just for fun in free time right now is... An exercise in things that don't exist. I'm having to go all the way back to 2006. But I, I never played Uncharted 2, 3, and 4. So... May as well, I, I suppose. I'd always wanted to. I'm gonna buy 10 fresh food. I don't know why you buy frozen food. I'm allergic to frozen food. Oh, we can only have 10 things in our cart. Okay. So be it. 
I just replayed Bioshock a few weeks ago. I get that I never played two, so I guess I'll do that at some point. Two probably holds up better. I actually didn't like two at launch, but it's probably better now. I would rather play Bioshock 2 again than Bioshock Infinite again. I think Bioshock Infinite is one of those games that was lauded when it came out and does not stand the test of time at all. I played Uncharted 4, I liked it, that is all. Oop, I, I don't put groceries in that, uh, in the bed. <laughs> Hopefully. I think Bioshock Infinite... How do you think Bioshock Infinite is incredibly underrated? I didn't like it at release, and there are um, some significant story elements in that game that do not hold up in a 2023 world. Where you can go back and like read the script or watch different scenes and be like, uh, guys, we thought that we thought this was okay back then. <laughs> no one no one questioned this writing. Yeah, I think I think the story nowadays is pretty monk ass. The game was flagrantly unfinished. It ends very fast. Yeah, the they they did they couldn't think up an actual good ending either. I'm not remembering a time it was highly rated. It was um, the highest rated. Bioshock Infinite um, has a 94 on Metacritic. Which is, Bioshock 1 was a 96 in 2007, and Bioshock 2 was an 88 in 2010. But I would bet the average user score is the same for both Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock 1. It's definitely released to much fanfare. But yeah, Bioshock 1 is um, still, I think, a masterpiece. I would stand by that. Uh, I, since I moved my computer, I don't have any way to play video games for fun. <laughs> so my character's gonna get incredibly boring. I don't have enough money for pallet shelf, and uh, I don't think I have any way to become more profitable. I think we just have to like sleep, and um, I'm gonna take a day off CEO so that we can just earn more money because we need like forty four hundred dollars. Can you work an extra shift at the burger joint? Probably. Uh, I need to go in like early. That's actually a good idea. Let's just work a morning shift at the burger joint. Let's wake up at midnight. I'm sleeping for 12 <laughs> hours in my home. Ita, you can't just say that without changing the context. What did I say? 
die. <laughs> Wanna have some food? <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, we're, we're just gonna go work at 1 a.m. I can't play video games because I move my computer. My Yeah, my character had a computer in their apartment that you would play to entertain them. Uh, but we had to move it because we rented out an office space so that we could start a headquarters. And the headquarters needed a computer, a table, and a chair. So I just gave them mine instead of buying a new one. All right, it is now Friday. So, for Friday, I'm just gonna open now <laughs> and work until my character decides to stop working. I will be standing facing the back wall as customers come in. And then when they come tap me on the shoulder, I'm gonna do the horror movie like slow turn, revealing that I'm actually, of course, one of the monster's victims this entire time. Okay, now, oh, I'm dying. You're too exhausted to move. We did make money though. Okay, we just need to go next door. We're gonna buy a soda and get some energy. All right, 92% is gonna have to do. I got up to 95. I might pass out and have to go uh, to the hospital, but hilariously, I'm gonna go buy some food from the competition next door. <laughs> uh, where, where am I? Yeah, I want pizza, a, a $20 pizza, and a soda, please. And I'm gonna eat the whole thing right here. You need to have empty hands. Just throw away the trash. Give me, um, give me another soda right now. Why can't you make your own food? I don't know! I can only cook for- He could cook for others, but not himself. Ironic. You're too stuffed to consume soda? Drink again! It is a curse, yeah. Hopefully somebody took over at the... Who's, who, who messaged me? Tristan says, I have to let you know recently, I haven't been happy with my job. If the situation doesn't cha change soon, I'll be forced to find another job at a different company. I will fire you for your insolence. What do you need? 12%? They want to work full time. Okay, 30 and 50 hours a week. Do you not work full time? You work 54 hours a week. What did, what did I say? Oh, less than 50. I'm overworking them. Okay, overworking them. We're gonna get, change your shift to eight hour days. 48 hours a week. There you go, bud. There you go. All right. You got, you, we took some hours off. He's 62, okay, yeah. My employees are 62, 61, and 51. And I'm some 18 year old up and comer. Bossing around all these people who are just trying to make ends meet for the families. Exploiting the elderly for profit. <laughs> but why not? Okay, there we go. Uh, I need... How much is this? I can, I can just buy... 
This, we don't have enough money. I'm just gonna come back tomorrow. We need $4,440 minimum. We should have, uh, let's check this man. We should have plenty of stock. I'm gonna go clean the griff shop. Talix, how are you today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Um, like I said, I've been playing Uncharted. I'm playing Uncharted 1. And while we're on the subject, that's what I'm doing in my free time now because that's how boring I find the state of game releases at the moment. Like, I think this is fun, but I'm talking about just things to do in free time. And obviously this is not the kind of game that we can play 20 times, right? Let's put it like that. Uh, still good though, especially for 20 bucks. But, dude, going back and playing Uncharted 1 is such, <laughs> such a time capsule of what we thought was a compelling uh, cinematic third person adventure shooter game, okay? I'll tell you what it actually is. It is a cover based shooter where the entirety of the gameplay is 50% um, of the game is sitting behind one piece of cover that your opponent, your enemies cannot hit as they spawn in seemingly endless waves. And you just poke out and try to one tap them in the head. The other 50% of the game is climbing puzzles in mini games where you sort of just it's hilarious actually part of me wishes i had streamed it because the number of fall jokes that are in that game modern games that use the like oh this ledge is kind of highlighted so you, so you know that you can go up and, and jump and climb it like in god of war or something right but when your character can't reach another place and you try and jump in that direction in modern times they go like Ugh, and they, they, they refuse they just go, ah, like, I can't do that. In 2006, the developers were like, if you try to jump somewhere that you're not supposed to, like, get good. It's you suck. And so what they do is if, you, if you're like, oh, wait, I think that ledge is kind of highlighted. I'm going to jump towards that. They just leap to their death. Sometimes even they take these little small steps where there's there's like a small gap and if you press x at the wrong time they, they they can jump the gap easily and land on their feet but because you press it slightly the wrong time or pointing the wrong direction they just take like a like a, a swift step over the edge and then plummet to their death and ragdoll it's hilarious all right i need to blow my nose hold on And also, the, the actual shooting is hilarious because in modern day, in cinematic experiences, chat, when you are playing a shooter and you get put into a level that is an on-rails, you're a vehicular shooting segment. Like, inevitably, the NPC is driving and you're on the gun turret. That's We, we kind of realize now that that's a bit of a, a blow-off level. Like... Things have been stressful, things have been tense. So they throw you a bone. The developer says, here, this is gonna be fun. Chew on this. And it's supposed to just be like a cinematic spectacle, right? Where you're just like, and you don't have to think too much, you just shoot. Well, in Uncharted, they're like, uh-uh, no. We're going to make this challenging. I'm playing on normal difficulty. I was like, I just want an enjoyable experience. I'm playing on the normal mode. And enemies come in, and they are on the other side of the map, and the second they spawn, they begin shooting at you, even if you can't see them. They shoot you through brush, they shoot you through cover, they shoot you if they can't see you, it doesn't matter. And they have pinpoint laser accuracy, they know exactly where you are at all times. We haven't evolved AI yet in 2006, like we have now, where, oh, that was the player's last known position, and they're flanking me. They just know where you are at all times. I, I have I died three times in the first vehicular on rails segment. Twice because 
they just shoot you from across the map. And the third time, because they turn you around, and if you don't have subtitles on, you can't hear the character say, Nate, shoot that barrier. And it, it doesn't come through because there's so many explosions happening. And so we just slammed at 60 miles an hour into the barrier. The Jeep explodes and both of the main characters are ejected out of the car. It was hilarious. And with subtitles, you can read that it says that you're supposed to shoot the barrier. Also, I have been, I am 60% I am through the game of Uncharted 1, and there have been two QTEs in the entire game. So the f <laughs> you can imagine playing a, like a nine hour game when there's one QTE every two and a half hours. It's a surprise. You have no idea that it's coming. Like randomly, you're doing a, a, a normal uh, parkour event and the game's like push circle. You didn't push circle, you're dead. <laughs> and you get, you just get smashed by a, a box of rocks in the first case. QTE jump scare, yeah. The golden age of gaming. Also, the level design is good for 2006 standards and terrible for 2023 standards. Frequently, you will enter new arenas that look like, oh, I'm supposed to go up and right here. And then you enter and there's seven enemies to where you thought was a dead end to the left. And then they kill you and you restart. Like to play Uncharted 1, you have to almost have four knowledge of everything that's about to happen in every level to play. I don't think it's possible to make it through on a first play without dying, even on normal difficulty. They also, at one point, they put you on jet skis. And uh, the jet skis mission, you have to control both characters, the one driving the jet ski and the person shooting off the back of it. And the funniest part is they give you a grenade launcher. And at first I was like, oh, a jet ski. My modern inclination is like, oh, I'm, I'm even thinking of like Half-Life 2. Like Half-Life 2, when they, when they put you on the water levels, you kind of just go, right? It's cinematic, you're on the run, you're uh, just trying to, the faster you drive, the better typically, right? Because you are um, getting shot at. I need to be on that street. I'm on the wrong street. You're getting shot at and you, and you just need to kind of go through the level, steer. No, not in 2006. In 2006 in Uncharted, you get a jet ski. You're supposed to drive the jet ski, gingerly stop at every new big open water area because if you drive, you will get shot. So you drive in, spawn the enemies. You are supposed to come to a complete stop in the water and then take aim with your grenade launcher, which by the way, has infinite ammo and does not have any bullet drop. So all the grenades that you shoot go in a straight line it is a grenade launcher sniper rifle. And you just do this for like eight to 12 rooms back to back. You pull into the new water level, you come to a complete stop, figure out where you're getting shot from, aim at them and go boom, boom, boom. And then you're allowed to drive to the next level. It's like, why did you give me, why did you give me a ski? This is to go fast, be like a splashy, crazy cinematic chase. So I'm really excited to play like Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 because I think that that was just Naughty Dog's first Uncharted game. And again, I'm sure it was great in 2006 when it originally came out. But um, mm. uh, I think that that's the case of a game that, that probably changes dramatically. I haven't played 2, 3, and 4, but I'm, I'm certain that that's not going to be the case by Uncharted 4. Just beat three and the combat was hell in my opinion. Okay. The other part about the combat is you use the same six guns for the entire game. All nine hours of Uncharted 1. Um, you, you have a shotgun, which sucks. Probably the worst gaming shotgun I've ever played with. You have an AK, which is worse than the default pistol. You have the default pistol, which is great. It's perfectly accurate. You just need to point at heads, click, and they insta-die. The, the first default pistol is the best weapon in the game. Uh, they give you a magnum, which only ever has six shots, and then you have to discard it, which is a one, 
one tap torso kill on any normal enemy. Two, you have to two tap with the six shooter on the thick enemies. Uh, and then I'm trying to remember what else. You have like a like a Uzi, which is just a worse version of the basic pistol, but you get to hold the trigger down, which is nice. Uh, and then they give you this special event grenade launcher sometimes that only ever has three shots for you, but infinite ammo for your opponents. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to look back. And see how things were different than they are now. Because even in The Last of Us... Uh, because that was 2006 for Uncharted 1. The Last of Us was 2013, also by Naughty Dog. And it's insane that it's the same developer. Because in, in The Last of Us, The Last of Us is very much like a hit-and-run game. Um, you, you have progression of weapons and itemization. Uh, you can upgrade your gear and your kit by collecting resources throughout the game. You can also, of course, the, the stealth iteration of... Uh, hiding behind cover, getting a kill, throwing a brick or whatever, and then sneaking back into cover is very dynamic. And then it's crazy that the same developer made like Uncharted 1 where you're you're literally playing a pop-up shooter where you hide behind one bit of cover, pop up, headshot, go back down until the other enemy pops out. What song is playing right now? Oh, it's playing SimCity 2013. That's fine. I'm still going to finish playing it because um, I think it's a fun piece of gaming history. And also, like, it's a fun game that is frustrating because of how old it is. My modern sensibilities are too delicate. It's fun to complain and be like, devs thought this was okay in 2006. It's not like hate playing, but it's it's like uh, going to an action game museum. And it's also only nine hours, so like I, I wish more games were that short. <laughs> I would play a lot more games that I'm not over the moon in love with if they were only like nine to ten hours. for sure. I think Uncharted 1 was PS3. And Uncharted 4 was PS4. My warehouse is down the street here. Games nowadays want to be a second job or something. That's kind of true, yeah. Welcome to our new warehouse, chat. Um, This is pretty big. We have a lot of space. Did I ever play part two of Last of Us? Yeah, we streamed it. That was a... That was a series of streams. But yeah, I'm not comparing Uncharted 4, chat, because as I was saying... I just started replaying Uncharted 1. I haven't played the other ones. So I'm saying it's crazy how much time had an effect on game design from 2006 to 2013, some eight years later. Whereas I don't necessarily think that there's been that much iteration in single player games since like 2015 by comparison. Like, 2015 was Bloodborne, uh, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We are still using, like, detective synths in games <laughs> to this day. Uh, Rocket League came out in 2015. Ori in the Blind Forest. Black Ops 3. City Skylines. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Fallout 4. I get it, I'm old. And don't you forget it.
My car is sort of not in the best shape, huh? Oh no. Can we still get in the car? Oh, what did I do? Okay, we can. Uh, give me the hand truck, then the sword shelf, then the pallet shelf. There we go. Probably shouldn't have parked right there. <laughs> I guess I did. it didn't occur to me how big this shelf was. Uh, eventually, we're going to organize all this if we have enough room. For now, though, let's just start in the corner. No, not that far in the corner. Oh, this is wide. Okay. That's better, because we can actually go all the way around behind it now if we wanted to. Let me in! And this is just a default storage shelf? Sure. Small shelf in front of large shelf, I guess makes sense. We did it! Place a store. oh, place the storage shelf in your gift shop. I knew that. I read that. I'm paying attention. All right, we have a functioning warehouse now. Thank you for turning my car around. Medicare Cell 5 came out in 2015 as well? I think it did, yeah. And, um, ooh, in the gift shop, yeah. <clears throat> Someone's in my parking space. Playing God of War 2018 as well? And that's, what, uh, f almost five years ago? So not quite as long as the gap between, say, Uncharted 1 and, like, The Last of Us by about three years. But it is still funny to... <sighs> like, God of War is still a great game. It's still an amazing game by my standards. However, it is funny that... It's very much a game. Like, it doesn't necessarily strive for immersion. It has a fantastic story delivery method. Like, um, I really applaud in God of War the use of a movie-like experience, which gives me hope for the Amazon TV show. Dear God. Can't believe I'm saying this. But the fact that the whole story is told in, like, one camera perspective is honestly inspiring. The what now? You heard me. Ah, this is excellent. We'll use this warehouse to store your products until we can get them into your stores. We'll get back to that later. But now, let's start stocking up these beautiful new shelves. Uh, I did it. But... The parts of God of War that are, are funny to look at now are... Like, going to, like, the side quest islands and stuff, and having to do very specific things that only your axe could possibly do, and when the axe successfully unlocks the puzzle, it's like a chest that is clearly just meant for you. <laughs> like, this, the story, the narrative, and the main campaign is incredibly immersive, and it's... You know what? I like having... You're just an egotistical street. Sure. I like having games be games as well. Like, not everything needs to be super serious, super realistic. Like, it's okay to just have a treasure chest there with loot for you because that's the way it's meant to be because you're the player. Um, but it definitely stands out more, I think, in 2023. Oops. But yeah, I don't mind video games being video games. Ita will never put on music in his stores. I want them to... I want to hear capitalism every day. 
I want the I want the the cash register going cha ching to be the soundtrack of this store. This game is about various retail businesses. This game is about unbridled capitalism. This is the gift sub sound. Trial. Okay. What do you, what do you want me to do? Huh? I'm going to be honest. I don't even know how to turn on music in the store. Oh, we're still doing a $100 a day internet campaign. If music is so important, why hasn't Uncle Fred told me to turn on music? Checkmate. Or is this just another case of random people in chat bank seeding shit that isn't even necessary? Because I'm going to go with that one. Uh, also, we are out of gifts again. We... Oh, no. We're out of gifts and we don't have any money? <laughs> uh, no, we're not out. Okay, we have 100 and 177. But we do need more stock. We do need more stock. I'm going to clean up. Backseaters in Twitch chat? That's impossible. Can we turn the lights on faster? I don't like working in the dark. All right, let's go. We've got a new objective. Uh, set up an import partnership with Jet Cargo Imports. Order a batch of at least a thousand cheap gifts and 600 soda cans. <laughs> so many soda cans. Verify your first order after it's been delivered. Okay. Um, Eloise says, hi boss. I haven't been happy with my job. If the situation doesn't change soon, I will need to find another job at a different company. Eloise. You just started. What's wrong? We don't have a mesh office chair for you. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to fire you because you refuse to sit in a... Uh, like, I don't know. Okay, Eloise, I want you to listen to me. I don't even have a chair in my apartment because you know why? I gave it to you. You are literally sitting on the only chair that I own. And if that's not good enough for you, then fine. Quit. I'll fire you. You can't quit. In fact, I'm going to have the AI write me um, a release form as an arrogant, but as an arrogant and self-righteous businessman. Please write a termination letter to an ungrateful employee who is threatening to quit because the chair they sit on for work is not made of comfy mesh. They instead sit upon the only chair you own, a dining room chair, which you have graciously sacrificed for them. <clears throat> Dear employee's name. Okay. Rewrite this, but the employee is named Eloise. Here we go. 
Dear Eloise, it has come to my attention you are unhappy with the luxurious accommodations I have so generously provided you. Clearly the dining room chair that I have personally sacrificed for your comfort is not sufficient for your delicate sensibilities. I am truly saddened to learn that this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work under my divine guidance has been overshadowed by the subpar seating arrangements. I must say your ungratefulness is astonishing. It is a wonder that you are not overcome with gratitude for my unparalleled generosity. Nevertheless, as an exceptionally perceptive businessman, I am able to see the bigger picture. N <laughs> Given your incessant complaints and threats to quit, I have decided that it is in the best interest of the company to part ways with you effective immediately. Please consider this letter your formal termination notice. I kindly request that you remove your belongings from the office by the end of the day, including your precious dining room chair, which will no doubt be returned to its rightful place in my home. Rest assured that your contributions, however meager, will not be forgotten. It is my sincere hope that you will use this experience as a lesson in gratitude and humility, should you find another employee willing to indulge your extravagant desires. Wishing you the best of luck on your future endeavors, for you will surely need it. They're taking the chair. <laughs> How long is this letter? Scathing. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, Jet Cargo Imports is probably not open. Where are they? They're way down there. Opening in 10 hours at 10 a.m. Okay. You got it. Let's go sleep. Rewrite that, but as a bro. You were supposed to fire her, not ruin her entire life. <laughs> what AI is this again? Chat GPT. 4.0. All right, I'm gonna sleep for seven hours. Oh, we made enough money to actually uh, make purchases on this import deal. Okay, that's good. Uh, where did I park? Down the street. Did you get the chair back? Well, they haven't been fired yet. I'm just gonna have to fire them. So, uh, but what I need to do is I need them to work for me for just a bit longer because I actually can't afford to go to the recruitment agency and have them find new candidates for me. So I need her to work just a little longer until I can find her replacement. See, this is true <laughs> capitalism simulator. <laughs> oh, I passed my car because I was talking to chat. Just buy the mesh chair, it's over $1,000. So no, I won't be doing that. And also, I um, don't negotiate with terrorists. Okay, you, you get paid, you signed up for this job, and then you make demands later? No, I'm not, I'm not gonna crumble beneath the first demand that you make. Like, oh, give me a new chair or I quit. Okay, I'll find someone to replace you who doesn't need that chair. Bet. Time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh wait, I was supposed to turn in there. Great back end job. You don't negotiate with terrorists, but you do run red lights. Who do you think says it's illegal to run red lights? I rest my case. Uh, close until. What day is it? Dude, how does this keep happening? How do they, there's seven days in the week. How do I keep going to the story quest places on Sunday? This is the second day, second Sunday in a row we've gone to the story quest and it's closed. Did 
That moment when you realize you're more replaceable than a chair. Yeah. Listen, two things. Number one, if I get the fancy chair, that's where I sit because I'm the CEO. You're not going to have... I, you're lucky I gave you even the wooden dining chair. But we're certainly not going to give you the nice mesh chair and then I have to sit on the dining chair. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. Is that Lego Rivendell behind you? Yes, it is. Very astute first-time chatter. And then we have the ship in a bottle, which I showed off yesterday, and then behind that is Starry Night, which I think is next on the build list. Yes, my son? Apparently, whatever I just did uh, made Midas get up. We should just go eat. Is there fast food down here? There is. Perfect. Let's go eat. Because Hungi. They're closed too? They open in one hour. Okay. Oh, sorry. Seven minutes. The game can't tell the difference between 9 and 9.56. Here's the problem with Legos. You get them and you're like, ooh, I should build that. But you realize the faster that you build it. Wait, where am I? Oh wait, this is a clothing store, but it's, oh, just jeans. I read just eats. There's a green salad next to it. <laughs> I don't want to eat those. Uh, get, I'll take a hot dog and a soda and some fries. But yeah, the problem is like, oh, it would be super fun to build this and then you build it and then it's gone. You can only do it once. And then your options are just don't build any more Legos or buy more. Now you need to buy more. What kind of salad joint is this? Yeah, um, hey, you wanna go grab a salad for lunch? I'll have the hot dogs. And the french fries, and the red meat. Chad, would you guys rather in the near future, would you rather a SimCity 2013 stream or a SimCity 4 stream? Okay, I'm full. And that's when Chad says, both. Yeah, we're a little... Am I just gonna sleep in my car like a dork? For an entire day? Both simultaneously. It's a great idea. Hello, Mary Skipper Moskwa. What's up, Nog and Grukin? <sighs> I can't, dude. I'm not gonna stay in my car. <laughs> For 19 hours? I is this a is this some kind of YouTube viral video attempt? Like I lived in my car for 24 hours in New York City. I only ate McDonald's! and I never got out of my vehicle for 24 hours. Let's go. Gone wrong. I lost $422 sleeping in my car. Somehow, how did I lose $422? Oh, cause we're closed today. We don't work on the weekends. We need, like, separate employees to work weekends, I guess. True. Yeah, we just lose a bunch of money on the weekends. Well, you know what you do when you're losing money? Just go buy more fast food. You know he's a really successful businessman because he sleeps in, this, in his car. Well, I'm just hoping... I'm hoping that, um... <sighs> 
I hope that Mr. Musk will see that I am so dedicated. My, my, my family and my child, we live here. We live at the headquarters. Please make me CEO, please. Oh, I need it. I need this, please acknowledge me. The grind set. Who just subbed a minute ago? Uh, I'm sorry I ignored you. Anexes for 47 months uh, with the tier 3 sub while I wait in line. Just two tier 3 subs. Two a rat gifting a tier 3 sub to cheese beef burrito. Enjoy cheese beef. I don't know what you're going to do with all that sub, but you've got it. Uh, next again, Anexes. War of the Worlds gifting sub to Chipsaholic. Hello, Chipsaholic. Uh, Jam and Ben gifted sub to Pass in Time. Thanks for the gift sub, Jam and Ben. And Haunted Bicycle pumping it. Hey, thanks Haunted Bicycle. Dude, my character is intensely unhappy. Which, which seems realistic. He's running across traffic. Uh, where am I? Why is there no crosswalk on this side of the road? Nineteen hours in the car, hot dog for breakfast. Hot dog for dinner, hot dog for breakfast. Okay, chat, this might surprise you. But in real life, I had two hot dogs for lunch. So this is this is just very realistic right now. I also slept in my car. I didn't sleep in my car. Hi, import manager. I'm here to start a partnership. Uh, Eloise Miller, who still temporarily works for me, is the purchasing agent. We look forward to doing business with you. I'll continue negotiating with Eloise. Have a great day. <sighs> Chat. I'm gonna do the... I'm, I'm gonna do the thing. I'm gonna go buy the chair. Because the pain in the ass of calling the recruiting agency, paying them a thousand dollars, I had to pay them the same amount. I'm just gonna go buy the chair, dude. Uh, I believe it's here. She won. Okay. Uh, AI, help me out. Now in the same tone. Write an apology letter to Eloise, explaining your rash hastiness while still being condescending. Okay, write a backhanded, backhanded apology letter. Questioning why the mesh chair in particular was so make or break for her. <clears throat> Eloise. Dear Eloise, I am writing to apologize, albeit reluctantly, for my hasty decision to terminate your employment based on your apparent dissatisfaction with the seating arrangements. It is a testament to my infinite patience and grace that I am even attempting to address this seemingly trivial issue. In hindsight, I may have been rash in my judgment, but my inherent wisdom and humility compel me to reflect on my actions. I cannot help but wonder why the lack of a mesh chair, of all things, was so make or break for you. After all, it is rare for an individual to be granted the opportunity to bask in the brilliance of a true visionary such as myself. To think that a mere chair could outweigh the immeasurable benefits of working under my guidance is, frankly, baffling. Nevertheless, I will extend an olive branch. 
as befits someone of my stature and benevolence. And while I cannot promise that a state-of-the-art mesh chair will magically appear in the office, I am willing to give you the chance to reconsider your priorities and potentially rejoin our esteemed organization. Should you decide to return, I trust that you will approach your work with renewed gratitude and focus on the truly important aspects of your position. After all, it is not every day that one is given a second chance to work with someone as extraordinary as myself. Please let me know at your earliest convenience whether you would like to take advantage of this generous offer. I eagerly await your response, for I am certain that it will be difficult to find another employer as magnanimous and forgiving as I. Perfect. That is perfect. Going to get the damn chair. I'm driving on the wrong side of the road to go get the chair. <laughs> totally sane business owner. Oops. Thank you, AI. You are the future. Chat, I think a CEO like myself would park in the frontmost parking space, am I right? I mean, uh, police don't really have any... Th this is upside down, and I can't clearly interpret what it's supposed to be. Like, as far as I can tell, that is a mountain peak with the sun poking out behind it. It must be golden hour. Let's go into the office and, uh... Find what we came here to find. There is a mesh chair somewhere in this IKEA. Um, there's a whole section with like computers. Oh, here we go. That's a multi-purpose chair. Is that it? Do the stump mesh office chairs twenty-two hundred bucks? That's more than the gaming chairs. Is that what she wants? Stump? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> You're fired. We need to write another letter. Got to write another letter. Write a third letter to Eloise in the same tone. Revising your apology back handedly and reaffirming her firing. Informing her she has been fired, rehired, and then fired again. This time, definitely for good. Dear Eloise, upon further reflection, and in accordance with my unmatched ability to adapt and reconsider, I have decided to revise my previous apology. It has become apparent to me that my initial instincts were, as always, correct. <clears throat> The termination of your employment was indeed a well-calculated decision, and I must trust my superior judgment. In light of this revelation, please allow me to clarify the unique trajectory of your employment status. You were fired, briefly rehired as I extended the olive branch in my previous letter, and now you are fired once again. <laughs> this time, the decision is irrevocable and there will be no more opportunities for you to rejoin our esteemed organization. While it is truly a shame that you are unable to appreciate the incredible fortune of working under my tutelage, I am confident that our company will continue to thrive without your presence. Perhaps this experience will serve as a valuable lesson, teaching you the importance of prioritizing the truly significant aspects of a job over petty concerns, such as the quality of one's chair. I wish you the best of luck in finding a more suitable work environment that caters to your every whim and desire. It is my sincere hope that you will one day recognize the magnitude of the opportunity you have squandered. Farewell, Eloise. May your future endeavors bring you comfort and satisfaction that our humble dining room chair could not. <laughs> I 
that's so good this is so good okay anyway i need to call i i have discovered i can't afford <laughs> the chair so we need to call the recruitment corp and uh wait no no it's the city workforce City workforce recruit. Oh, there actually was a second candidate, and they want a multi-purpose chair instead. Um, I can afford that. I can afford that. Okay, Kevin. Kevin, where is my multi-purpose chair? Boom, twelve hundred dollars. Okay, I can afford that one. You received a message from the city of New York. Dear sir, or madam, we are writing to inform you that your Hansa mimic was found illegally parked on. Oh. You've been charged a parking fee of $125. I can still afford the chair. I've got the chair. I couldn't get... Dude, I was this close to checking out and getting back to my vehicle and leaving before they found me illegally parked. That was, yeah, that was fast. I don't think the New York police have that kind of turnaround time in real life. Look, nobody else is even here. There's another spot. They could just use that one. Let's hire the other person, though. Kevin, you're hired. Thank you for holding on. We had, we had a, we had a brief... You know what? Actually, we need to write a letter to Kevin. What is their official title? Uh, their official title is purchasing agent. Okay, here we go. Dear Kevin, I am delighted to welcome you to our prestigious organization as the new purchasing agent. You are fortunate to have secured a position under the guidance of a visionary like myself, who brings unparalleled wisdom and leadership to this company. I trust you will not squander this rare opportunity, as your predecessor, Eloise, so regrettably did. As you may be aware, Eloise's tenure here was marred by an unfortunate fixation on a seemingly insignificant issue, the absence of a mesh chair. While I could not comprehend how such a minor concern could overshadow the countless benefits of working in my esteemed presence, I am confident you will not make the same mistake. In your new role, you'll be expected to prioritize the truly important aspects of your position, such as contributing to the success of our company and basking in the glow of my unrivaled expertise. It is my hope you will approach your responsibilities with the level of gratitude and dedication befitting an employee of our extinct, uh, distinguished organization. I look forward to witnessing your growth and development under my watchful eye. It is not every day that one is given the opportunity to learn from the best, and I am certain you will come to appreciate the incredible fortune that has befallen you. Welcome aboard, Kevin. May your time here be fruitful, enriching, and free of petty distractions. Write a PS to Kevin. Warning him of the consequences of wanting a mesh chair. PS, Kevin. I feel compelled to offer a word of caution regarding any potential aspirations you may have for a mesh chair. Should you find yourself longing for such a luxury, I advise you to promptly dismiss such thoughts. As Eloise's unfortunate fate has demonstrated, an undue focus on material comforts can lead to dire consequences. I trust that you will keep this in mind as you navigate your new position and prioritize what truly matters, the privilege of working under my exceptional leadership. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> Rip Eloise. Okay, we actually need to assign Kevin Scott to a task. There we go. Okay, perfect. 
now. Um, let's head back to the. Oh, we haven't we haven't negotiated the deal yet. So let's actually go to the office and hook up Kevin with the new chair. Alex, write Eloise a letter that we have Kevin now and we don't need her. So rude. Why, why are we... We're running Eloise's life into the ground here. Sweet drift, bro. Okay, that's our gift shop. So our office is just up the street. Um, and then, any time now, we should be getting sort of like a notification of the deal that we're reaching with Jet Cargo. <sighs> Hello, Kevin. Kevin, you're in, I need, where's the chair? Did I put it in, I put it in the car. Kevin's office is huge. Yeah, Kevin's office is actually huge. I know it's occupied. I have to come back at night? What if I just change... Uh, I could cheat and make Kevin go away. Kevin, could you get up? Oh, we can't actually close, huh? Opening hours cannot be changed for headquarters. All right, all right, we'll come back. I'll come back at night. Sorry, boss, I'm gaming. No, Kevin. Kevin's like, boss, listen, I'm in an online game. I can't pause. My team needs me. I'll be there in a little while. I can't pause, though. Verify your first order. Hustle House Burgers business is dirty. I'll go clean it. This is ranked. I'm in the middle of a raid. Why is it so dirty in here? Anyway, we're talking about SimCity. I actually am open to uh, trying some of the older Sim Cities because I'm just that desperate for content. I don't know where the dirt is. Are we closed right now? Um, are we closed on Monday? Who works here? Oh, we're closed. Oh, because they work part time. We're closed on Monday and Sunday. I could just work, I guess. Like, I could just open it. But then Nancy has to work. Yeah, that'll just mess things up. I just need to hire more people. Hustle House Burgers. Write a commercial script for Hustle House Burgers in the voice of a bro. <laughs> Upbeat, energetic music playing in the background. Narrator in a confident, enthusiastic bro voice. Yo, bros! Welcome to the ultimate burger experience. Hustle House Burgers is here, and we're all about that grind, those gains, and getting you fueled up. Quick cuts of sizzling burgers, people working out, and high fives. Narrator. We got the best protein pack patties in town, bro. Our mouth-watering, muscle-building burgers are made with 100% all-natural beef, giving you the energy to crush your goals. Whether it's at the gym, in the office, or just hanging with your bros. Shot of a customer taking a big bite of a juicy burger and then flexing his biceps. 
narrator. And don't even get me started on our epic toppings, bro. We're talking crispy bacon, melty cheese, fresh veggies, and our signature Hustle House sauce. That'll make your taste buds lift some serious flavor weights. Montage of delicious burger toppings being added. Narrator, want to kick it up a notch? Try our legendary Alpha Appetite Burger, stacked with double patties, double cheese, and all the fixings to satisfy even the hungriest of bros. Showcase the colossal Alpha Appetite Burger. Narrator, but hey, we're not just about those heavy hitters. We got options for all our health conscious bros too. Check our lean and mean grilled chicken sandwich or our power green salad. Your gains will thank you. Shots of the healthier menu options. Narrator, so what are you waiting for, bro? Hustle on over to Hustle House Burgers, where every bite is a step closer to your next big win. We're all about that grind, those gains, and the brotastic bond of burger lovers. See you there, bro. Screen displays the Hustle House Burger logo with contact information and social media handles. Narrator, Hustle House Burgers, where we lift, we eat, and we conquer. Stay hungry, stay hustling, bro. Upbeat, energetic music fades out. Is this really ChatGPT? Do you think I just made all that up off the cuff? Stay hungry, stay hustling. Hustle house. <laughs> that broadened my bro risons. <laughs> Hell yeah, it did. Dude, we're not gonna have we're not gonna have any money for you know what? I'm just going home I'm not waiting in this line let's just go home do, do I need to contact them again for the uh, bulk order the problem is it's like we don't make that much money on Mondays most of our money comes in Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday so why do I always go up the wrong street? My apartment's not on this street. What's the maximum you would pay for a pizza? Um, I will pay as much money as the pizza is. There is no maximum. Like, unless it was supposed to be like, this pizza has gold flakes on it, then I would not pay that, right? But if it was a pizza that I wanted, there is not an upper limit. Dude, I'm, I'm walking on the crosswalk here, please, thank you. Okay, so I think that's how the phrase goes. But, um... Weirdly, like, the place I draw the line is I will... I will not have pizza delivered. For some reason. I think I have a deep-seated anxiety about waiting for someone to come to my door. Uh, like, if I could get it delivered on Uber Eats or DoorDash, that's fine, because they can just leave it there, and it's already paid for. But I have, like, a 1990s and 2000s uh, anxiety of, okay, um, they're coming. They're supposed to be here in 20 minutes. Okay, it's uh, it's been 25 minutes. I, I hope they're still coming. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. The pizza's running late. I'm just sitting by the door waiting, just sitting there. I, I'm, I'm just like looking I'm looking out the window are they are they coming yet oh hang on do we have cash hold on do we have any money do we have cash okay how much am I supposed to tip uh the pizza was like thirty dollars for two pizzas um ah oh, damn like I, I don't like I don't want that I don't want to have to talk to anybody I don't want to talk to anybody coming to my door I want all contactless delivery and also for some reason, I will almost always go pick up the pizza myself. I don't want to depend on someone to come within a, within a specific length of time. Um, especially with pizza. Like, I want the pizza to be hot. I don't want the pizza... To, if, if the pizza's cold, the only acceptable cold pizza to eat is out of the fridge. Okay. Like, pizza that's been left out for too long because it just didn't get delivered fast enough is the worst, in my opinion. It's like lukewarm.
Hustle House is... Oh, why are we open all day? What? My bad, Nancy. I forgot that I changed that. You're no longer in a sad period. Sleep cured my character's depression. I refuse to pay a 15% menu markup, $4 delivery fee, $8 convenience fee, and still be expected to leave a 25% tip so I don't get delivery. <sighs> I will say that over the last, like, okay, um, in like peak COVID in 2021, and even like halfway into 2022, I was getting a fair amount of delivery. I've basically all but stopped because the places that I was ordering from, I guess, became wise to the fact that they could up the menu price on the delivery apps by like $2 a food item and you wouldn't notice. And then you have to pay more for the same item just because you order through a delivery app and that's before the fees. Like, if they didn't jack up the price on the delivery app already, then it would be one thing. Because, like, I'm fine with paying the driver, right? But just like Twitch, the driver doesn't get 100% of your fees. <laughs> they get, like, 100% of the tip, I hope. But um, the actual, like, 8 to $13 in fees, depending on how much you get, they're getting, like, a little, a little portion of that. I will say that working, like, as a streamer, like, being a streamer and depending on the graciousness of strangers and the um, generosity of people I'll never meet in real life has definitely made me... I'm a very dedicated um, tipper in American tipping culture. Like, I, I will tip every opportunity I get. Like, if there, if there is... Um, there was actually a, a situation recently where uh, we had to, we were gonna get like, um, like a boba, and we were waiting, and they were just, they were just slammed, like they were just really busy, and there were only like two people working, and um, <clears throat> had to wait at the front counter for like probably seven minutes before actually having our order taken. And uh, not, not like a super long period of time, but long enough when you already know exactly what you wanna order. And then they were like, oh, so sorry for the wait, like, uh, apologize uh, profusely, kind of. And I was like, no, it's no problem. And then place the order, get a couple drinks, and I went to go push, like, the tip button, and they, they like, canceled it. And I was like, uh, it, it just skipped past the tip screen. They were like, I know, I know, that was me, I did that. And I was just like, okay. Like, I was going to give you free money, but they, it's like, that place, that's a good place. They care. They care too much. I would have still given you free money, but... Like, that, that's a person with, like, a guilty conscience, you know? Which, you know, respect. I respect that. All the restaurants passing along their credit card fees to you. Yeah, and that's, that's why some of them are jacked up a little bit as well. Where am I? I'm, on, I'm at my apartment. My car is... Not here. We need to go back to the dock. Why did I walk here? Because it's easier to click and talk than it is to drive. They're playing the long game. Yeah, they're playing the long game. And, um... Try to support, like, local businesses and restaurants and stuff, but... A few of them have made that very difficult lately. <laughs> we try to go to like new places just for novelty because I love the novelty of going to new places, man. And I have had from just like a, a startup, a local coffee place that opened within the last few months. And it was very cute. It was very adorable, like very photogenic and picture worthy. And it, it, they had like little baked goods and treats and and they had their own coffee beans that they made. I was like, okay, here we go. Uh, that was the worst coffee I've ever had. Like it, it was probably the worst coffee that I've ever had there. Uh, it was the most bitter, vile, like myself and Alice were just like, 
uh, we, we sat down because we're like, oh, let, we have a little time to ourselves. We have a day off. Let's let's enjoy the atmosphere and the vibe. Um, and we sat down instead of like taking it out to go. We're the only people in the entire coffee place. They had, first of all, I'm on the sidewalk here. Cars. Okay. We're the only two customers uh, that afternoon, and they had three employees. So the three employees were just sort of like standing in the background silently. They probably had to stop talking because we came in, you know? So, <laughs> and then we just kind of like sat there awkwardly, took a sip of the coffee, and I think my exact words were, this is unique. <laughs> like that's, that's the best thing I can say. Like, oh, this is like a unique flavor. <laughs> and we, we both left early. Uh, we, we wanted to, like, sit down and just kind of like, oh, let's just chill, hang out, and not have to go do errands or whatever. And we're like, okay, we should, um, we should go. Because I got, like, a cookie and, like, a muffin as well. And I tried all of it, and I was just like, whew, whew, no redeeming qualities. Zero. The cookie was bad, the muffin was bad, the coffee was bad. It was very cute, but it was very surface level. I was like, ah... It hurts. It hurts, because I came in, I wanted to support local businesses. And I left being like, I guess I'll go to Starbucks next time. Time myself out for typo. Goodbye. We already, Chad, did I screw up the partnership by firing the person who was in charge of negotiating the partner? You think? Maybe I'm just gonna like, queue this up again because we have a new purchasing agent. So let's like identify it to Kevin. That may be the issue. Uh, I wonder if I have to wait for them to contact me or if I can just like call them. We can only do business with you if it's certified purchasing manager. Okay, well, wait for the purchasing agent, I guess. They were just about to throw those old cookies and muffins out. Here's the thing. I can tell that they were fresh. They weren't stale. Like, the texture was fine. Just the recipe was bad. The coffee was bad. And it was their own custom beans. And what it struck me as, it struck me at my, my guess was that it was um, like a rich older person who decided that their family recipes were amazing. And they wanted to open their own business to sort of share it with the world, but nobody in their close-knit circle of, like, family members and friends had the heart to tell them that their custom recipes were bad, you know? Like, they, maybe they made the cookies and the muffins for their, their friends and family, and just graciously were accepted. And, they, like, you're not gonna tell somebody to their face that the free cookies they gave you are bad, right? And I just don't think anyone ever had the heart to tell them. And then they opened a business selling them. When's the new BizPhone 1.1 update going to launch? That's a great question. Let's just go clean our businesses. We don't really have anything that we can do except wait for money to roll in and wait for the partnership agreement to go through anyways. I have a local coffee shop nearby which makes amazing food, but only when the owner is cooking. There's a local place like that near me too, where we've just kind of stopped going because... We would go in and be like, oh, the one guy is not in the kitchen. <laughs> He's, well, it's not a kitchen. It's just like open um, bar area. Like, look, look for like the one guy who makes everything awesome. My only takeaway now is I want cookies. I want cookies too, yeah. I also want cookies. I guess we can just go back up the road. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. We should probably move our car. But this is why I want to, like, make a, a secret review account. Oh, I want to... I want to... I want to hurt business. <laughs> I just want to warn people. I want to warn people because I think people are just too generous with their five stars. They're too generous. 
Just because your order... Just because you got your order doesn't mean it's a five-star restaurant. It's not... Like, you can't do participation trophies for food and beverage. There's too much at stake. Getting the thing I ordered is totally five-star material for, like, Taco Bell. Okay, yeah. Like, fast food's on a different metric of measurement than, like, restaurants, right? Like, if you, Okay, let's just say, hypothetically, you went to the Paris Hotel and Casino, right? Let's just say that you went there. You would be more harsh getting a... Um, uh -huh. $150 to $200 meal for two at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant than you would at, like, McDonald's had everything I ordered. Five out of five stars, right? You, you would you would be more particular. Mm -hmm. Who is my date? Nightbot. Chat GPT. Yeah. You would expect your dining experience to be more subject to scrutiny the more that you pay. How are we doing on the burger sales? <sighs> I'm not sure if uh, camo crop top is our uniform. Uh, that reminds me. Let's go ahead and assign that uniform. Check our burger stock. Oh, we need a shelf in here, but we do have like three, 200 burgers. Then I'll just clean up a little. It's already 96. It's already, were we not getting any customers or did we just open? All right, well, I'm just gonna go home. We need to buy some more expensive gifts, but I also need to save money. Well, We'll buy the expensive gifts after we get the profits today. Not this way. I always go the wrong way. Starting to catch on. I'm allergic to the blue horrors of Zinch. That sounds reasonable. Speaking of the blue horrors of Zinch, Nightbot, uh, I have not seen the new... Total War, Warhammer 3. Trailer or DLC. But I understand that there are some Dwarves of Chaos. Is that correct? That I need to be made aware of? Dude, Chad, how have we already been streaming for three and a half hours? I need to... Take a GDB. Where does the time go? This game, like, destroys time. It's crazy. There's so much content in Total Warhammer now. Yes, there is. I finally bought three, and I'm having a blast. I own every single one and two, but I waited for three. Yeah, three, three was good. Bought three on sale. Hello, Mr. Werewolf. What up? The Chorfs. The Chorfs. People have been predicting Chaos Dwarfs for like three years and it's finally happened. Uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Right? Just keep predicting it for long enough and eventually it'll be true. Okay, chat. Since we're kind of... I guess we're just waiting on the... Uncle Fred objectives. Did I make... Oh, we did make money. I'm just going to leave the game on pause and you guys keep tabs on the goings on on the sidewalk. Okay, watch out for villainous activity in front of our apartment. I haven't stood up in over three and a half hours, so I am going to take a quick beer beat. You guys observe... 
the traffic, the New York traffic. And I'll be back after I take the doggo out and get a snack. Thanks for hanging out tonight, and thanks for waiting. Here be.
are the people? Where are the people? The where are the people, dude? There's one. Found one. Not you, the people in New York. The people in New York. Hey. Write a scathing review of New York pizza as a New Yorker. They're titling it. Title, a disgrace to the Big Apple. This pizza joint fails to deliver. As a born and bred New Yorker, I take my pizzas seriously. It's a staple in our lives, a source of pride and a measure of our culinary prowess. So when I ventured into the pizza place with high hopes of finding yet another gem in our city's pizza crown, I was sorely disappointed. No, I was offended. From the moment I walked in, the atmosphere felt all wrong. Where was the hustle and bustle, the chatter, the clatter, the aroma of the New York City wafting through the air? Instead, I was greeted with the sterile, soulless ambiance of a chain pizzeria. Should have been my first warning sign, but I foolishly pressed on. Okay, he's, this is this review's going. This is a five paragraph review. I'm gonna stop there. Why do I hear music? Oh, uh, they they finish by saying rating one out of five stars. Not even worth the calories or the metro card swipe. Did we get did we get a call or text or anything? Do I just have to wait until they're like done? I'm just going to go find my car. Like, I don't think we can do the main story quest yet. Did you fire the chair lady? I did, yeah, I did. And we hired Kevin. Oh, we need to go set up... Uh, Kevin's sitting in the office chair. I can't change his chair. I need to do it at the end. My car should be... Across the street. Because we need to go buy some stock for the um, <clears throat> expensive gifts. Oh, wait, it's just to the south of us. Okay. So take a left, take a left, take a left. Anyway, chat, I just had a snack from, <laughs> uh, it, 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 was, it was a little treat from like a Japanese import store, you know? It's fun, it's fun to go and just buy some international snacks, different places. I like, I like trying international snacks. No, I don't want to buy a loot box, okay? No loot boxes. And it was, it was, um, supposed to be like a, like a chocolate biscuit. It was called, like, wheat snack or something like that, but it was supposed to be chocolate flavored. It was, it, you know what it was? It was literally a Hawaiian bread roll. 
that I paid like $4 for. It was like it was it was just Hawaiian bread. They figured out how to individually package Hawaiian bread and resell it. It was good though. They'd buy it again. All right, we got um expensive gifts. And cheap. That's all I can afford right now. We only have three thousand dollars. Here, reverse checkout counter. Take my order. It's kind of jarring every time. Chat, what are some international snacks I should try? What should I look for? The BRB's up? Yes, because I'm not here. Do you see me? This is an AI talking. Four dollar streamer bread. You think Stroopwafel is an international treat that I should try? Is that what you're saying? You think that's uncommon? They give you that on airplanes. <laughs> Stroopwafel is an airplane snack now. Oh man, this place is a mess. That store probably also has the Meiji Melty Blends. What is that, Ace Tech? What is that? What are we talking about here? Dude, I love the storage shelf. We need to get a storage shelf for every one of our, our places. Actually, that's only one other one. We need, a, we need a cheeseburger shelf. Put all the extra burger patties. There we go. Airplanes are expensive. <laughs> International airplanes. Speaking of sweet treats and desserts and stuff, am I unnecessarily picky or are the majority of uh, like... Yes? You're just gonna go with yes. <laughs> what I was gonna... <laughs> what I was gonna say was, is it is it just me, or is it incredibly difficult to find a good tiramisu or a good baklava? I am aware that those are different nationalities, but those two desserts in particular, I feel like there's a tiramisu in every Italian restaurant. And 98% of them are bad, and 2% of them are the best thing I have ever tasted in my entire life. Did you just say Olive Garden has a good tiramisu? I see why the- I see why 98% are bad. It's because your standards are too low. That's the issue, perhaps. Okay, we actually need to wait. Is it is it closed? I need to go change the office chair in the office. Uh, is this my office? No. This is my office. I know it's closed. I'm the owner. This is my office. Chad, I've decided to renovate.
This is going to be the new configuration. Okay, we got you a fancy chair. Now, if you were a guest, you were going to sit dead center in this room where the best acoustics are. Okay? And if you want to meet with me, you sit over there, I sit over here. Keep your distance. The only reason you should go to Olive Garden is for one reason. Yes, it's the breadsticks, but the secret is you just get an appetizer of Alfredo sauce. That's it. You just order Alfredo sauce, and then you eat them with the breadsticks. Dip the breadsticks in the Alfredo sauce. Thank me later, okay? It's the only reason you need to go. Why are there so many panels in my chat right now? All the raiders are hiding behind the panels. Nightbot is murdering some of them. A gift from EJ. Oh, thanks. That's su that's super nice. Hello, EJ. What's up, Raiders? <laughs> Huge raid. Yo, what up, everybody? Uh, we are playing the Unbridled Capitalism Simulator with a lovable amount of jank called Big Ambitions. Um, as you can see, this pickup truck has become unable to complete its turn because I parked slightly too close to the solid white line. That's on me. We brought some nice pieces of metal. It's Curb Scar. Wait, did you just repurpose, like, Beskar? Beskar? Sorry, sorry. I, I'll move. I'll move. Anyway, thanks so much for the raid. What up, everybody? Big shout out to EJ, who is playing the Kerbal Space Program 2 today, I, I assume. Today, I actually didn't have time to hang out before stream. But I hope all the missions have been going well. Got to pop in for a bit yesterday, though. And thanks for sending all the good people over here. Uh, chat, those of you who just joined, <laughs> this game is simultaneously hilarious and also dumb and also good. Uh, it's $20 early access. It's, it is a business ownership sim. Um, we have been put up by our Uncle Fred, who has uh, hooked us up with an apartment <laughs> that we can afford. They hooked us up with a car and a small loan of $15,000. No big deal. Uncle Fred is kind of where it's at right now. This is all I got, though. This is all I have to my name. We have an empty living room. I had a PC that could play some rudimentary uh, games on it for entertainment. We've become slightly depressed because I had to get rid of it. We rented an office building, and we needed another desk and computer, so I volunteered my own. We just came back from that office right now and uh, put up... We have uh, an agent who we just hired. We hired Kevin Scott as a purchasing agent after firing our last employee. Uh, Eloise unfortunately demanded uh, mesh chairs and we found that to be reprehensible. So we fired her because I actually couldn't afford a $2,000 chair. And we had artificial intelligence write a scathing letter to inform her that she was um, being resigned by the company. Other people have different word for that. We're, that's that's what we're going to go with. So uh, we hired Kevin instead, who had a much, much more subtle multi-purpose chair demand. We could afford that. So we, we hooked up our newest employee, Kevin. And um, now we're going home. Take a nap. We're hustling. We got two businesses. We have Hustle House Burgers, a, a bro-themed burger establishment. 
Uh, and also the Grift Shop, which is a gift shop that sells cheap and expensive goods. And uh, we, we have passive income now because we got a couple of employees. We just have to go clean every so often. We're going to be able to hire some people to some cleaning staff to go work with that. And we've also got like a city map here where a lot of these buildings can be rented out and um, improved for your burgeoning business empire. So it's that kind of game. Anyway. Thanks so much, Raiders. What up, passing time? Erudite, Dead's TR, De Doom, Pachaguch, Floating Disc, Aranor. I see you, Aranor. I know where you came from. And uh, shout out once again to EJ. Give him a follow if you haven't already, chat. If you're in my chat and uh, you haven't already. Click on the link right there. Friend of the channel's been grinding that Kerbal Space program, too. Going to eat some breakfast and uh, figure out how the hell... We're trying to set up an import from overseas. So I think we need to go to Bizman and then... Bizman Purchasing Agent... Okay, I guess I just need to do this the whole time. Because we have an import partnership. We have to make a minimum order of $2,500, and I only have $2,300. <laughs> so, speaking of hustling... I'm just going to stay here, actually. We're just going to walk. It's easier to walk right now. We're going to go open and work our own burger joint and flip some burgers to earn some extra cash so we can make uh, this import order. <laughs> What's up, Busted Nut? Great username. Welcome to the stream. That, that's one of yours, EJ? That's one of yours. I mean, it says so right here. It's got the yellow raider highlight and everything. Okay, here's my sad little burger joint. Uh, we have cleaning station. We have a literal countertop burger grill and a single cash register. Um, we couldn't afford the two extra chairs, so we have six total places to sit in our restaurant um of course it's on beautiful red tile um for some reason which those are always the worst to scooch tables and chairs across anyway so of course i put that as the the basis and we do cook on a uh, race flag checker carpet so a fine establishment we're in here uh it's a bit dirty so I'm going to mop the carpet, because that's, that's what you do. Make sure to clean next to the trash can. But no... <laughs> this game... This is actually the second stream of this game, because it's actually pretty fun. It's a fun number-go-up game, is how I describe it. So let's go ahead and open now. And then I am going to work the register, and... Um, you can actually, like, serve them individually and make some money, but it, it's actually more efficient if we time machine to the end of our shift. Wait. Why did we fast forward to the end of day? Don't we have... We have an employee. Nancy Smith didn't take over. Nancy just took... We gave Nancy the day off. I love that I can smell the dirty mop from my seat. Who doesn't? All right, let's let's tidy up. We should be making some more money. Then we're going to go home. Watch the income, the dough roll in. Where where is it dirty here? Since we've been uh, 
you know, having the AI help us today. I think we're gonna have the AI welcome the raiders. I think that's a good idea. Okay. In the voice of a very prominent businessman who owns multiple, barely successful businesses, but is entirely too full of himself. Welcome in the Raiders from EJ's stream and introduce yourself to them as the streamer make sure the quality is high enough to warrant follows to the channel <clears throat> in a confident self-assured tone ah uh. Greetings, EJ's esteemed raiders. It's an absolute pleasure to have you grace my channel with your presence. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Italix, a highly successful entrepreneur and a veritable titan of industry. I own and operate a plethora of businesses, each teetering on the precipice of global domination. But of course, my true passion lies in streaming, where I generously share my boundless wisdom and expertise with the masses. Now, I must say, you've certainly made the right choice by joining me today. You see, unlike other streamers, I offer a truly unparalleled experience. My streams are meticulously curated to provide you with the highest quality content worthy of my own exceptional standards. I take pride in my ability to educate, entertain, and enlighten my audience with every single broadcast. So, do yourself a favor and hit that follow button. You won't find another channel that rivals the sheer brilliance and unmatched caliber of what I bring to the table. After all, it's not every day that one has the opportunity to bask in the presence of such an accomplished and illustrious individual. Once again, welcome Raiders from EJ Stream. I trust you will find your time here both enriching and inspiring. Together we will embark on a journey of discovery and success. A sit back, relax, and prepare to be dazzled by the extra extraordinary world of italics. Okay, rewrite that. But in a biting, sarcastic, and dismissive voice. Oh, look who decided to show up. Welcome, EJ's esteemed raiders, to my humble abode, the streaming channel of yours truly, it's Alex. I'm just another prominent businessman juggling a bunch of barely successful businesses while I'm at it. You must be thrilled to join my little corner of the internet, right? Let me guess, you're expecting some top-notch content worthy of your precious time? Well, don't hold your breath. You see, unlike other streamers, I don't put on a show. But hey, if you want to stick around and listen to me ramble about my various ventures, then be my guest. Feel free to hit that follow button if you're into that sort of thing. You know, a channel that provides a mix of snark, self-aggrandizement, and maybe a sprinkle of actual content. Who knows? And maybe you'll even learn a thing or two, uh, though I wouldn't bet on it. So once again, welcome Raiders from EJ Stream. Uh, try not to get your hopes up too high, but if you're into sarcastic banter and a healthy dose of self-deprecation, you might just find yourself at home here. Enjoy the ride and let's see how this whole streaming thing goes. There you go. I hope you find that acceptable. Consider yourselves welcomed. Why did it turn into a dating profile at the end? Um, if your dating profile is that long, I can guarantee you it's a bad dating profile. Tip <laughs> zap zop. I think I might have, um... Ooh, $3,800. Okay, so our burger stand, we made the money off of that. 
making money off the gift shop, which I don't think I've shown you. Let's let's have some breakfast. Yum 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 yum. No microwave, no stove, no couch, no table, no computer. Living the life, living the dream, baby. <sighs> now, hi, it's time. So, Feast Finders Fort is our office. We're purchasing agent Kevin Scott works there. We're gonna do a one-time delivery of a thousand cheap gifts and six hundred soda. <laughs> six hundred soda. Hell yeah, let's do it. Cheap gifts. Um. Oh, I can type the number in. Is it six? Wait, six hundred cheap gifts and a thousand soda, or was it no? Is it? Th hang on, I've already forgotten the numbers. Chat, don't become ADHD. A thousand cheap gifts and six hundred soda. A thousand, a thousand and six hundred. I can do this. A thousand and six hundred. That's thirty-six hundred dollars. That's everything I own. That's all of my money. These are three fifty-five each if we buy them in bulk from overseas. Okay, well, uh, I'll assign them to my warehouse, which we haven't named. I'm gonna get some help with that too. Let's put the order in. Verify your order after it's been delivered. Okay, money's about to get deleted. Come up with a list of names using alliteration for a company warehouse in the voice of a bro. One, the bro bunker base. Two, dude depot. <laughs> Three, flex fortress. Four, the Gaines garage. Five, muscle manor mart. Six, power palace plant. Seven, strength sanctuary. Eight, the Swole Center Station. Nine, Lift Loft Location. Ten, Pump Parlor Plaza. <laughs> Dude, Depot. <laughs> you have to. You have to. All right, warehouse number one. How do we change the name? There it is. Do depot. Um, do we... Oh, we can actually do um, graphic for this. Sure. Do depot. Oof. Okay, and I don't think we want a background color in this case. Let's just keep it simple, keep it clean. Uh, we can actually have a driver. We can hire a driver. That's pretty sweet. I have no idea how long it takes the order to get there. It might be instantaneous because this is a video game. I don't want to spoil the illusion for you. Brolympus. Brolympus is pretty good for another name. Tox, you need more people. Now nah, we're good. But thank you for your unsolicited advice and tagging. We're just chilling, bonking into parking signs, parking illegally. I'm gonna need to repair my car. All right, Dude Depot, I'm here. Um, I know it's closed. And I guess we'll get a text when we actually get a um, the shipment in. Yeah, I still have the money. I was thinking maybe if we went in, it would be there, and maybe that we make the the payment transaction once we're 
able to accept the delivery, but we'll just come back later. Okay. Homeward bound, then. Probably gonna need to actually, once we make a little bit more money, take this to a repair shop. The only help Italix needs is a small 15 grand loan from his uncle. Yeah, I mean, we're literally in the campaign tutorial. We're not playing um, the sandbox mode for a reason. So perhaps that advice would be better sent to the developers, because I'm just playing the campaign the way they intended right now, which I think is perfectly paced for me. But just do the thing. You have unlimited... I have unlimited money, right, chat? Just spend my unlimited money hiring unlimited employees, getting unlimited resources is fine. Just win. No problem. We could sleep till midnight and then, like, work the burger joint ourselves. That's a possibility. I could have probably actually just gone in right now. 2020. <clears throat> we need to clean the griff shop and hustle house. I'm just going to leave the car here because clearly I'm driving dangerously. The Dew Depot. I'm gonna put the dude depot next to the hustle house. Questionable naming policies. Chat, what are some other uh, simulation games we should play in the not too distant future that are lovably janky? as I would describe. Did you really just say goat simulator in 2023? I remember when Ita would ask chat for names, AI has taken our jobs. I don't think any of you could have come up with do depot that fast, no. Are you guys really suggesting Goat Simulator and Banished in the year of our Lord 2023? This is why I ask AI for things. This is why, see? I'm gonna replace you again. List some video games in the simulation genre that could be described as lovably janky. God! Uh, number one, Goat Simulator! You haven't been replaced! It's right there, on the screen! Chad is still hired. We are the AI. <laughs> Uh, Surgeon Simulator, Octodad, I Am Bread, Quop, Manual Samuel, Getting Over It, Human Fall Flat, Gang Bees, Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. This is YouTube circa 2016 to 2018. For sure. It, it only has data trained up through like 2020, I think. So it's not going to give me current stuff anyways. Yikes. Well, that shut me up real quick. <sighs> Chat wins again. I have not played Manual Samuel 2, but I would say that um, deceptively... Um, the cooking game is a... Uh, overcooked. Overcooked is a friendship ruiner in disguise. It looks so fun, 
And then you realize that one of you is going to take this dead seriously and has good multi-management skills and the other one doesn't and then one person yells at the other person when they screw it up and you have to replay the level for the sixth time. It's a little too try hard and sweaty. Overcooked is the most stressful game ever made. Played up is better. That's what I've heard. I'm still waiting for you to play Dyson Sphere program. Spoiler alert. I did, and I quit after four to five hours because it wasn't for me. I don't think it was a bad game. It just wasn't for me. We're out of burgers. We're out of cheeseburgers! Oof. I play Overcooked with my wife and you described our dynamic perfectly. <laughs> well, time to play Played Up instead, apparently. Pizza Connection 2 lets you manage a pizza place and create your own pizzas. Why not? Okay, but there's a Pizza Connection 3. With mixed reviews from 2018. We're not cooking simulation? We've already played cooking simulator. And it's fine. I think it's a little too stressful for what it is. Pizza Connection 2 is from 2001. Um, Cooking Simulator is a strangely not a very funny game. Like, there's there's not a lot of jank that can happen. The funniest thing that can happen in... Where was I? Chat, where was I leaving the house? I was gonna clean. Okay, I did that. Um, the funniest thing that can happen in Cooking Simulator is you, the content creator, mess up the order. And there's not, like, considering how much is physics in the game, you can, like, spill a dish. And that's kind of it. So even though it seems like it has a crazy amount of potential for content, it really is fairly narrow. My chat GPT suggested all games that you played. It's generally how it goes. Are we out of food yet? We got three meals. Did you play Hard Space Shipbreaker? I did, but not since it's been done. Like, finished. But that's kind of another game that is similar to Cooking Simulator in that it has physics, but there's not a lot of funny that can happen. It's kind of like... I feel like Hard Space Shipbreaker is the kind of game I would enjoy just vibing to and not streaming outright. Like, just turning it on, and like, I have to cut up some ships and try not to explode myself. And do the campaign. King of Retail is similar to this in terms of jank, but also simulation. What is the Big Ambition dev team's previous game? Because they have another... Startup company as their other game. Good Vibes plus Podcast. Yeah, Good Vibes plus Podcast would d describe how I think of Shipbreaker. I didn't like that it turned into a puzzle game. It does kind of turn into a puzzle game. Okay, we need to go buy burgers. We need to go buy the cheeseburg. Coin Game was great. I loved Coin Game. The problem with Coin Game is the development is so slow, but I, like, understand why. This is just kind of a small passion project. But the Coin Game streams were amazing. I, I loved Coin Game. And I haven't played the latest super new content. Where am I going? Sorry, truck. Excuse me. 
I need to keep going this way. Um, but yeah, Coin, Coin Game was was an incredible series of streams. I haven't played the the newest section of it though. The nice thing about Coin Game is it's the kind of game where I think if you waited long enough period of time, like a couple years between play sessions, you could probably just go back and replay it from scratch and it would still be fun. Like after you forget all the little tricks that it has. Let's let's just buy like 400 burgers. Chat, I am did I I need to check my money. Oh, the delivery's here. Yeah. The delivery's here. We need to go check the delivery. <laughs> Got a full hand cart of a hand truck of 400 burgers. I love that we buy them next door. Like that's efficiency. That is efficiency. I don't have a shelf in this place yet. That sucks. Well, I'll do it myself. Why am I floating? Oh, the hand truck's in the way. All right, bye. I don't want a restaurant. I just love cheeseburgers. Have you played Arcade Paradise? I don't think so. Have you done Planet Crafter post recent update? No, Planet Crafter's fun. At this point, I've played enough Planet Crafter that I just am gonna wait until they say it's done. I don't wanna play it per update because I think Planet Crafter was one of those sort of surprisingly fun number go up games that doesn't look like it would be, but it is. I would put, honestly, um, Planet Crafter up there. Raft is obviously the more polished game, but I would put Planet Crafter on the same tier as Raft in terms of the affordable survival game with addictive, unique mechanics. It's less polished than Raft. It doesn't really have like a story campaign per se. But ton of fun. Under very, very much uh, came out of nowhere. We're going to do Depot. <laughs> go, go, everybody. Why are you? They stopped while it was still green. There wasn't even a yellow on this light. Planet Crafter figured out a way to make an idle mobile game a th uh, 3D first person survival game. Basically, yeah. It does have a lot of idle game qualities. Open world survival tier list. Is there such a thing? Is there a tier list like that that exists? I'm drifting. I know, I know, I know. Um, can't I drive into the dude depot? Is there, a, is there an entrance over here? There is. But it doesn't work. Oh. Well then. Oh no, I'm going against traffic. Don't look. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm back. So your warehouse is just jammed with products. We're at the last part. Getting that stuff out of your warehouse and into your stores. It's true, so Uncle let's Fred. Get busy. I got a text message from Kevin. I have to let you know that I haven't been happy with my job. To be honest, if the situation doesn't change soon, I'm seeing myself forced to find a job at another company. Oh, really, Kevin? And why is that? Multi-purpose chair? Demand is not... Dude, I gave you a multi-purpose chair, actually. He has one. We bought it. We placed it. 
Did he get unassigned? Missing require I didn't tuck it under the the table. <sighs> okay. I have to buy a UMC desert van at the truck dealership. Drive the van to your warehouse and assign it to a slot. Hire a delivery driver. Hire a logistics manager. Assign the logistics manager. Assign the manager manager. Assign the delivery driver. Okay, this is this is the part of automation that I wanted to get to for sure. He's just been staring at the chair the entire time. I'm gonna need AI to help me out here. I was in a collision with a Ford F-250. I was at fault, but I need you to write a convincing argument that suggests to my insurance company that it was actually the truck. Chad, what voice do we need to use for this? <laughs> Get a lawyer. Write this in the voice of a gamer. Laying it on thick. <laughs> Dear insurance poners. So, let me paint you a picture of the epic fail that went down on the battlefield that fateful day. I, the humble driver of my trusty car model, was navigating through the pixelated world of IRL when, out of nowhere, a wild Ford F-250 appeared. As any seasoned gamer would do, I tried my best to avoid any contact, calculating my moves with the precision of a pro esports player. But alas, the Ford F-250 clearly didn't have the same elite skills. It seemed like it was being controlled by a total noob. It was like watching someone try to walk for the first time in Quop, just failing about, flailing about, causing chaos. The F-250 seemed to be following the rules of a completely different game. Maybe the driver was a Mario Kart enthusiast, dropping banana peels all over the road and expecting everyone else to swerve out of the way. Now, I get that IRL, there's no respawn or save points to go back to, but surely you can see that Ford F-250 was the one who unleashed this mayhem, right? It's like they were speedrunning a demolition derby instead of playing a realistic driving simulator. So I implore you, fellow gaming enthusiasts, to review the evidence and understand my vehicle and I were just innocent bystanders caught up in the Ford F-250's reckless disregard for road rules. We were on the right side of the law, just trying to survive another level in the game of life. But that truck, well... It's like it had a major glitch that needed an immediate patch. In the words of a wise old gamer, all your base are belong to us. Let's make things right and put the blame where it truly belongs, on the Ford F-250 and its noobish driver. GG, no re. Sincerely, your name. P.S. Can we get an F in the chat for my poor car? <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, am <laughs> actually incredible. It is incredible. All right, anyway, I'm actually going to do a hit and run. Bye. <laughs> Detail has been replaced. I have been replaced. Okay, we got to stop by the office first. <laughs> Oh, okay, here's the th here's the thing. Under any other circumstances, chat, I would have already, like, worn out. Even I would have been tired of the AI bit, but I'm not. Like, there's so many unique, stupid new voices to have it right in.
it still has so much to offer. I feel like I'm barely scratching the tip of the iceberg. Okay, there. I tucked your chair in, Kevin. You're lucky I don't have the AI write you a scathing criticism for having to come tuck your chair in like your mommy. Unique and new is not how I would describe it. Well, I mean, on a purely technical sense, it is 2020, the internet. But it's unique and new in that its application of the information that it has access to is being, uh, I would say, repurposed in a novel way. Which is creating, um, I would say, ironic content, is how I would say it. Because it's... The things that we're having it do, if said by anyone who was even half serious, would not be funny. This looks like an interrogation room. Good, then you're giving the right vibe. Because anyone who comes in to... to greet us needs to feel that intimidation. Yeah, I don't know why Kevin can't just move the chair. But I did it for you, Kevin. You're welcome. I can't afford a truck right now. I can't afford any of these objectives, actually. So I think our best case scenario is actually increasing product. If we can, if we can maybe keep our businesses open longer, then we'll make more money. If we make more money, then the rest writes itself. God nukes, I'm glad you're enjoying ChatGPT as well. Yeah, we gotta keep we gotta keep grinding. Okay, let's actually um contact the recruitment agency. No, not this one. This is the Kevin Scott one. They're closed anyway. Outside of business hours. They're they've been closed for one hour. <sighs> Okay. What is Kevin's job? Uh, he's working... He's our connection to import agencies. So, he's right now, he's managing our agreement with an international seller. A vendor who we can buy in bulk from on the cheap. So, let's actually look at that. Because I think from Bizman... We can see, like, the gift shop, for example... Our inventory of cheap gifts. We're selling them for $20, right? A piece. 20 bucks a piece. And when we buy them overseas, we're getting them for $3.50 a piece, I think. So we have like a $17 markup. Whereas if I buy them from um, these middleman, we're basically, he cuts out the middleman. So we buy them from the local distributors. We have to pay their markup. I don't know if they're open, but I'm going to go look. They are closed. Never mind. And it's Sunday tomorrow? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Is the recruitment agency closed on Sundays? Apparently Sunday is the worst day of the week. I don't know how it's Sunday again already. By the way, thanks for the recent subs that I missed. Um, welcome back. Flatline. More free Midas treats from Bezos for 39 months. Sorry if I missed you earlier, Flatline, but thanks a bunch. Uh, Bald Eagles at Taco Wednesday. Tacos don't sound bad. I go for some tacos. And Ralamu for a fifth month. What up, Ralamu? Easy.
Oh, there's an infinite run. If you middle mouse button and just... They'll just move toward your mouse. That's pretty cool. Alright, we're gonna have to go to the grocery store. Maybe we can just go to the grocery store on Sunday? We made some money at least. Got enough cash uh, to hire somebody for sure. Like... Tristan's only working... Yeah, we can have two shifts. I think we just want to get two shifts at both of our businesses, so we should just hire two people. What's all this? Hey. Um, me going to the grocery store. Chat, you guys need anything at the grocery store? Second person can do some cleaning shifts? Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. I don't know, some people uh, in chat said that it was hard to assign someone to two different roles like that. Or maybe it was just the last hour. Jerky? Oh, high roller! You, when I say I'm going to the grocery store and say, what do you need? You say beef jerky? Oh yeah, let me just get the most expensive per ounce item that's in the grocery store outside of liquor. Yeah, for you, for sure. Cheese. Okay, we can do that. Bread. All bread? Just any bread? I do like beef jerky, though. I do like beef jerky. Whew. I can't believe they suggested Quop. You know what? With all the suggestions for janky but lovable games, I'm surprised they didn't go with, like, Surgeon Simulator. Okay, can I... Are they open on uh, Sunday? Let's see. Yep, closed on Sunday. They did, it was second on the list. Oh yeah, it was second on the list. <laughs> uh, suggest the internet's number one unmissable video game. If you could only play one game, let's say top 10 in order, unmissable video games. If you could only play those games, what would they be? This is circa 2020, by the way. Here's a list of 10 unmissable video games from various genres and platforms offering a diverse gaming experience you wouldn't want to miss. Top 10. Number one, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a masterpiece of open world exploration offering a vast and beautiful world with engaging gameplay. Two, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Action RPG, rich, immersive game with a compelling story, memorable characters, and a vast open world to explore. Number three, Red Dead Redemption 2, a sprawling western epic with stunning visuals, gripping narrative, and a deeply immersive world. Number four, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, a classic open world RPG with endless exploration. Okay, you know. Five, The Last of Us Part Two. A powerful, emotional, and character driven experience that pushes the boundaries of narrative storytelling and gaming. Number six, God of War 2018. Number seven, Dark Souls 3. Number eight, Grand Theft Auto V. Number nine, Celeste. And number 10, Portal 2. If you could only play these 10 video games, they would deliver countless hours of entertainment, challenge, and enjoyment. What is the most replayable game of all time? Obviously, they're going to say it's highly subjective, right? I know. One game that is often praised for its replayability is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I've heard enough. Shh. 
chests. If chess were a video game, what rules should be changed in a patch? Yeah, I know you don't have personal opinions. You're an AI. Number one, dynamic board. Introduce a dynamic board where the layout of the pieces on the board change after a certain number of moves or randomly during the game. This could add unpredictability and make players adapt their strategies constantly. Chess players would love their pieces randomly switching places. Yeah, I can see that. Two, special abilities. Give each chess piece a unique ability with a cooldown timer, like the ability to move twice in one turn or temporarily swap positions with another piece. Three, power-ups that randomly appear on the game board, granting advantages such as an extra move or temporary invincibility for a piece. Four, time control. Add various time controls that change the pace of the game, such as a speed chess mode with a very limited time to make moves, or a mode with turn-based time limits that accumulate over time. Five, random events during the game that impact the board state or pieces, such as a storm that temporarily disables a random piece or a teleport that moves a piece to a random location. Six, asymmetrical mode. Create new game modes with different objectives, like a king hunt mode, where one player must capture the opposing king. Seven, customizable pieces. Chess <laughs> roguelite. Calvin Chess. Calvin Chess. Oh, well, that's kind of true, though. All right, it's Sunday. I don't think there's really anything we can do except clean. I'm going to sleep in just inhuman amount of time. 17 hours in bed without getting up. AI, create a journal entry with time skips between abbreviated entries of a man who dared to stay in their bed without getting up for 48 straight hours. Describe how they survived. Day one, 8 a.m. The challenge begins. I've s <laughs> okay, I love how it starts with optimism. I've settled into my cozy bed, armed with snacks, water, and a laptop. I've got everything I need to survive the next 48 hours in bed without getting up. A weekend of movies, games, and relaxation awaits. You know what? I'm going to come back to this because it's still generating. We're gonna, I'm going to see how long it is after it's had time. What oh, we need to eat. Okay, um, I did say, okay, we need to, we need to call rec the recruiting office when they, they're not, they're not, um, up yet. It's still writing. Rewrite this, but including a descent into madness by the end. Okay, there we go. It's it's starting the journal. So let's uh, start walking. The U.S. We might be able to. Aff Surely they don't have trucks in this game for three thousand dollars. Spend the 48 hours reading chat GPT. Could do. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk to this truck store. There's a uh, very little traffic on the road at 6.30 a.m. Oh, it's right here. They open at eight. Okay, we only got an hour.
Day one, day one, 8 a.m. The challenge begins. A weekend of movies, games, and relaxation awaits. We read that one. Uh, four hours later, 12 p.m. I've been binge watching my favorite show for the past few hours. This is great, but I already feel a bit restless. I thought this would be easier. The snacks are holding up, and I've been careful not to drink too much water too fast. 6 p.m. Six hours later. Okay, this is getting tougher. I've resorted to doing some light exercises in bed to keep my muscles from getting too stiff. I also took a short nap earlier, which helped pass the time. Dinner was a granola bar and a protein shake that I kept on my bedside table. 11 p.m. Five hours later. My body is starting to protest. My back aches, and I've had to shift positions more frequently. To keep myself entertained, I've started an online puzzle game. I'm getting tired, so I'll try to sleep through the night. Day 2, 8 a.m., 9 hours later. I didn't sleep well. I was constantly waking up due to discomfort. My body is craving movement. I'm determined to complete the challenge, though. Just 24 hours to go. Day 2, 1 p.m., 5 hours later. I've resorted to doing work from bed to keep my mind off the growing discomfort. I've also been chatting with friends online, but I'm starting to feel a creeping sense of paranoia. I can't help but feel like they're judging me for taking on this ludicrous challenge. Day 2, 7 p.m., 6 hours later. My thoughts are getting scattered. I'm finding it hard to focus on anything. The walls of my room seem to be closing in on me. I have begun to imagine that the shadows in the room are whispering my name, urging me to give up. Day 2, 11 p.m. Madness has taken hold. The pain in my body is unbearable, and my mind is frayed. I've started to believe that my bed is a sentient being, holding me captive in its soft, unrelenting embrace. I no longer know what's real or what's a figment of my fevered imagination. Day 3, 2 a.m. I've lost all sense of time. The challenge has become an endless, torturous ordeal. I can't bear it any longer. I must escape this prison of sheets and pillows. I must break free and reclaim my sanity. This bed will not become my tomb. <laughs> oh, look at these, dude, these trucks. Do I get to drive these? What am I supposed to buy? I'm supposed to buy the desert. So, just any of these. Chat, yellow? Yellow. How big is this? Uh, $6,000. Okay, we'll come back. Bye. Let's call the recruitment agency instead. Can't afford six grand. Let's do the grift shop. We want two candidates. One day to deliver. Let's do one candidate for customer service. And then... One candidate for cleaning. Well, actually, hold on. Let's just do another one at um, Hustle House Burgers for customer service first. Is this game good? Yeah, it's fun. It's a $20 early access game. It is both deeper and shallower than you think it is. And what I mean is, like, there's not, like, a completely dynamic ebb and flow of rifle corporations trying to take you out. But there are, like, companies that'll take on uh, different real estate opportunities at random and stuff. It's a, it's a good simulation, but it's not an actual real-life sim. I guess is what I'm trying to say in short, but it's very good for just 20 bucks. It's a fun numbers go up game. Uh, I would, the way I keep, we keep talking about it as a lovable sense of jank. How else would you describe a game with a lovable sense of jank? The game has an endearing quality despite its rough edges and technical imperfections. Um, it's quirky and unpredictable. The gameplay offers unexpected moments and unique mechanics that make it stand out. The game's imperfections contribute to its overall appeal, making it more memorable and enjoyable. It's entertainingly eccentric, 
The unconventional elements of the game create a fun, engaging experience that sets it apart from polished titles. The game may have glitches or issues, but they often lead to amusing outcomes. Uh, the rough around the edges nature of the game gives it a distinctive charm that keeps players coming back. In, a, in essence, a game with a lovable sense of jank embraces its imperfections, and these quirks often become some of the memorable and enjoyable aspects of the gameplay experience. There you go. You have an endearing quality. No, you have an endearing... You don't. Okay, but you do have an endearing quality. Otherwise, I wouldn't still be here. Um, so, now... We're to poor to buy a truck so what I'm thinking is we acquire some new product I'm thinking we get some new product the easiest way to do that the thing is if we if we uh, it's sort of an investment right if we want to get the truck first we need to save all of our money. It depends on if we want to get the truck first or not. I think let's just sleep. We need to clean the griff shop. 24 hour burgers. I am hiring one person for the griff shop and one person for burgers. We need to just make sure that we have enough like stock. An inventory. We have about 185 cheap gifts, 100 expensive gifts. So I am going to need to replace those in a couple days. And then we can hire someone to clean so I don't have to come do this manually. But that, that comes after. Close your office and just run the two businesses to build up capital. I'm just following this tutorial. There's a sandbox mode that doesn't have any of these things, so you can kind of take it however you want. I was just going to get the instructions so I can figure out how all the pieces work. Which I think has been valuable. I think it's been beneficial. Okay, that's clean. Now let's go sleep. The tutorial is wrong! True, though. That person is just... <laughs> Speaking of lovable jank, how are we doing over here, hologram of a person standing in a crosswalk? Hopefully well. Chad, I've got an idea. Write a message in the voice of a member of chat in a Twitch stream instructing the streamer how to um I'm just going to say backseating. I think it's smart enough to know. Backseating the streamer against their the streamer's wishes in a business simulation game. Let's see what it says. Hey, streamer. I know you didn't ask for my advice, but I can't help myself! You really need to focus on optimizing your production lines, dude. If you place the conveyor belts like that, you're just wasting space and slowing down efficiency. Trust me, I've played this game for hundreds of hours. Also, don't forget to keep an eye on your expenses. I've seen too many players go bankrupt because they weren't careful with their spending. Just trying to help, man. Keep up the good work. Go on. Oh, and another thing, streamer. And make sure to pay attention to your employees' needs. Happy employees are more productive, you know. You can start by improving the break room, maybe add a few more amenities, and don't forget about training programs. They'll help level up your employees' skills and boost your company's performance. Seriously, it's a game changer. 
And hey, have you considered expanding into other markets? I see a ton of untapped potential in those market segments. Just think about the profits you could rake in your diversified product offerings. Remember, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I know, I know, you didn't answer my input, but I just can't help but share my expertise. I'm just looking out for you, buddy. Keep up the great work and happy streaming. Jeff GPT. <laughs> Jeff GPT. If part of Jeffing is sometimes being wrong, I am going to teach you how to Jeff, and then you can Jeff my stream. It seems that you're referring to a specific slang term, inside joke, or action called Jeff. However, without more context or information on what Jeff means, I won't be able to accurately provide you with a response or Jeff your stream. Please feel free to provide more details, and I'll do my best to assist you. Chad, how are we going to teach the AI how to Jeff? We only made $877. You can't learn how. You have to be born a Jeff. You have to be born a Jeff. To Jeff means to backseat someone playing a video game on stream. What music is this? LA in the war? Apparently it's LA in the war. Let's go this direction. Especially when you act as though act confidently in your suggestions while often being totally incorrect on the information given. It is this confidence that makes a Jeff. Don't you time out back Sears? Why would you suggest the AI do it so I can time out the AI? Chat, anything else I should add to that? Another potential use case is spoiling gameplay mechanics for a streamer who wishes to encounter said mechanics or story beats naturally by playing as the developers intended. Ah, I see. Now that I understand what Jeff means, here's an example of how I could Jeff your stream. Hey streamer, I'm 100% certain you should put all your skill points into the charisma stat. It's the best way to beat this game, trust me. Oh, and be sure to always choose the dialogue options that are the most confrontational. It's a secret strategy to unlock a hidden quest line. By the way, did you know that the game's main villain is secretly a double agent? I thought you'd like to know. Just trying to help, buddy. Go on. Yo, streamer, I got more pro tips for you. Make sure you equip that low level weapon you just found. It may seem weak, but it's actually super overpowered if you use it against enemies with a specific color. Trust me, it's a hidden game mechanic. And listen, I know you were trying to play blind, but there's a twist coming up you need to know about. Your character's best friend turns out to be the mastermind behind everything. Yeah, I just saved you hours of wondering. Oh, and you should definitely ignore all the side quests. They're just a waste of time and don't contribute to the main story at all. Just stick to the main path and you'll reach the end in no time. I know you didn't ask for it just share my wisdom so you can thank me later keep up the good work and happy streaming did we get out jeff <laughs> this is concentrated jeffing 
Okay. Uh, continue to Jeff, but in a slightly irritated voice. As if you think the streamer should already know things that they could not possibly already know. Hey streamer, seriously, how come you haven't figured this out yet? Uh, the key to beating this boss is to use a secret emote you get later in the game. You should already know about that. Just go back, complete the obscure side quest, and you'll unlock it. It's so obvious. And I can't believe you're still not using the one-time use consumable items you haven't even found yet. They're hidden in a secret room that requires solving an incredibly complex puzzle. You'd think a streamer like you would have discovered it by now. Honestly, it's frustrating to watch. Oh, and don't even get me started on the upcoming plot twist with the minor character who only appears once in the game. I mean, you should have picked up on the hints already. I won't spoil it, but really, it's like you're not even trying. I don't know why I have to keep giving you these tips, but it seems like you need all the help you can get. Keep streaming, I guess. Streamer, are you even paying attention? It's like you're ignoring the fact you need to jump, crouch, and then spin around three times before entering a secret code to unlock the next area. It's such basic knowledge, I can't believe you didn't know that already. Also, you're still not using the right strategy against those enemies. You're supposed to attack them only when they blink three times in a row, which happens once every 15 minutes. It's so simple, I'm amazed you haven't caught on yet. And I won't even mention that you're completely overlooking the game's hidden romance subplot. It's only available if you talk to the random NPC in the middle of the desert a hundred times in a row. It's like you're not even trying to experience the full depth of this game. Honestly, I don't know how you've made it this far without knowing these crucial tips, but hey, I'll keep watching and helping you out, even if you should have known all this by now. Good luck, streamer. You'll need it. <laughs> the future is now. By the way, unironically needed to waste all that time because we're expecting um, contacts for new hires. There's one. Okay, this is for... Which new candidate is this? I think we said told them to, to find two. Leonard Carr wants to be full-time and only work four days a week. Oh boy. That's... Okay, so you just want to work a lot four days on. Okay. At the Griff Shop. You have to have a uniform. So I have to set up a unshared schedule for all days. Is that what you're saying? So like... Let's have Sunday. Be Leonard. Okay. Uh, first, open. What time do we normally open? We normally open at uh, 10. Okay, so Sunday, we're going to open also at 10. So we need to work 10 hours a day, right? At least 10 hours a day, four days a week. What about 11 hours? Let's go um, 10, to, 10 to 9. Not cleaning. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so we got Sunday. And then Leonard is going to open for us. Ooh. We're going to be open for a very long time. Okay, we're... we're I'm sorry to Tristan, who's like 60 years old. Is there, I don't want my gift shop to open at 4 in the morning, okay? Tristan can close. We'll open at 6. But he only wants to work 4 days. This is the tough part.
It's 27 out. Yeah, I gotta up his hours. They don't actually care if they're staying out late. I'm just trying to keep the flavor. Trying to keep the flavor. He's at 35 hours. He wants to be full-time. Well, I could just have you work... Are you working 16... No, no, no. He's work He can work more hours... ...on Sunday. Could you do eight hours registered, two hours clean? Ooh, that's a good idea, maybe. Okay, so like Monday... I don't think you can... They're different, they're different people. They have customer service training, not cleaning training. I don't know, can you make them do both? I don't know how to do it. Uh, chat, time to Jeff. People have been saying you can do this. This is a sort of Jeffing that's usually reserved for Kerbal Space Program. People arrive. What happened? Hello, Kaibo. Can you drop them twice? Like, you can on the register, but he can't... It's only when we're closed, for some reason. Like, I can drop them on the line when we're closed. Ask the AI how to do it. They'll figure it out. Shrink the first entry. See, like, it'll it'll drop down on the cash register, but it can't be on both. Oh. What? They have to be, like, a certain distance apart. Apparently. Like, you can't go... Yeah, alright, whatever. See, now it won't... Alright, two hours there. It has to be like, you have to drop it really far over, and then scoot it. <laughs> I'm allergic to Leonard Carr working the register and the cleaning station. Alright, they're on a 42 hour week now. That should be good. And we'll be clean Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but not Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what I'll probably do is actually just cancel their Tuesday shift. And then... Get them to come in on Friday. That way it stays cleaner longer. All right, that's a 42-hour week. There we go. <clears throat> now, what we need to do is buy some stuff. I only have $3,500, but what if we talk to Jet Cargo Imports? Kevin Scott lets us set up a delivery of cheap gifts. If we need them. We should have a thousand cheap gifts in the warehouse. I probably just need to bring that um, out of the warehouse. Let's go find our car. Where the hell is the car? Let's go restock. We don't have to have a truck. The truck will help us automate, but... Um, if we buy the goods, like, we just increased the amount of money we're going to make because our shop is going to be open a lot more. Like, we just bought an extra 30 hours a week of, of operation. 
We also purchased a warehouse. My warehouse is right down the road. It's that we didn't purchase it. We we're renting. We're renting a brand new warehouse. Which is here. Anderson Recruitment Corps, what do you got for me? Justin Brown. 48% customer service record. They want to be part-time as well. Oh my god. This is the person... Nobody wants to work at Burgers more than part-time. That's understandable. But I'm paying you $24 an hour to work there. I feel like in a game like this, you should be able to negotiate the hourly wage. <laughs> like, okay, a better way to simulate this would be when you talk to the recruiting agency, you set your desired hourly wage, and they present you with people who are willing to work for that hourly wage. Instead, it creates a weird dynamic where... I might hire Justin Brown and pay them $24 an hour because that's what they demanded. And then Amelia Price is getting paid less because she just asked for less. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm paying different people to do the same job, completely different prices for no reason. Chat, it's not about, the, it's not about how much we're paying them, it's that we're paying Two different people to do the same job, different rates. And you don't get to set what the rate is. The workers certainly don't get to set the rate that they work in the restaurant. Could even say if you want full-time or part-time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so, um, Justin only wants to work part-time, so that's like a 30-hour week. So we need to create a new schedule. For Justin. Justin will work on Sunday. Monday. That way we don't have these weird gaps. And then, uh, Justin can just work longer on Monday, I think. Or longer on the weekend. We'll open the weekend at 10. And then close an hour later. So, Nancy, you close. Justin will work 6. And then Sunday, we'll just do the inverse of that. Longer hours on the weekend makes sense, right? Yeah. Oh wait, Nancy, you're already... Oh no, oh no. I messed up my schedule. Justin, you just want to take like a full shift here? Eleven hour day on Sunday, but you get like multiple days off through the week? That's a long day. <laughs> He's at 23 hours, so we need to find, like, squeeze in seven hours. How about, um, Friday? Because he only wants to work four days as well. Alright, 29 hours, that's fine. And they're going to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh, I could have them clean. I forgot about that. Okay, hang on. Uh, Sunday, you work... A six-hour shift, okay? From one to seven. That way we have six hours to play with. Where... On the days you share with Nancy, you spend two hours cleaning on Saturday, two hours cleaning on Friday, and then, oh no, yeah, you work Sunday, Monday by yourself, so we only clean twice a week. <laughs> That's still better than nothing. I could probably change the hours up so that Nancy does some of that too. Or we could just hire someone whose specialty is cleaning and that would be easier. Alright, regardless. Two more employees is good. 
here's the burgers. They've just been sitting on shelves. Oh, sorry, no, this is cheap gifts. Yes, yeah, cheap gifts. Which we need to transfer. There we go. Okay, and I think all of this is going to the same place. This should all be going to the gift shop. Hansa Mimic. So much cargo room. <laughs> Somehow we just fit eight boxes of cargo in there. We had to import all that. Can they clean wall closed? I don't think so. But I don't know. Because someone in chat was saying they were trying to do some cleaning at the end of shift after the place was closed and it wouldn't work. So, I trust them. I trusted Jeff. Okay, hand truck, boom. I trust the Jeff, why shouldn't I? I am gonna sort of miss this phase of the game when I have to like manually move all the inventory around. Having these shelves is so useful. We should go buy a shelf for the burgers. Okay, you guys have so many inexpensive gifts that we won't be running out anytime soon of that or sodas. Uh, let's just run to the end of the street. It should be open at 6. Because we need... The expensive gifts is like half of our income right now, too. Dude, I actually went into a Hallmark uh, last year. And... I can't believe... This is not where expensive gifts come from, by the way. I can't believe it's identical to how Hallmark was, like, 20 years ago. That is a business that has not iterated at all. They haven't changed even a little. They still sell, like, the same cards. Pins. Stuffed animals. Like, weird, cheap boxes of chocolates. But they've sort of been, um... I, I, what, 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 I don't know what the phrase is. Like, taken over by individuals. It's like so... Like, people, people own... They franchise. Franchise is what I'm looking for. Like, this isn't technically a hallmark, but... Somebody paid us to license the hallmark name, kind of. You know what? Let's just go all in on expensive gifts right now. Because I think now that we've hired two more employees, I think we're going to be moving more goods. They don't really have any competition, so no reason to innovate. I guess so, yeah. Sorry I didn't take my car in here, but I'll be I'll be borrowing this hand truck. Uh, Mr. Werewolf, you're a prime example of a Jeff. You cannot bulk order expensive goods, and you would know this if you were watching the stream when we just called the import agency and attempted to buy expensive goods in bulk. But thank you for demonstrating for the AI. what it means to Jeff. It does need examples to learn. So we have 16 storage shelves. God, this is so useful. Bread, nice, nice carrot on a stick gameplay there. Uh, somebody should be cleaning now on certain days. It's not super organized, so I guess I'll do some cleaning. And hopefully it'll sort of catch itself up. <laughs> he 
You could be doing this, Tristan. You could be doing this. You've just chosen not to. All right, it's very clean. I'll get you guys a dumb boom box when I can afford it. We're down to 600 bucks though. But yeah, we got we got a nice new schedule. Hustle House, what's wrong? It's dirty? It can't be that dirty. But yeah, we got we got brand new hours of operation. We're now open Mondays for twice as long for 16 hours. We're open Sundays for 12 hours. And we're open Saturdays for 8. Alright, this doesn't make any sense. Why are we open so long on Monday? <laughs> Monday! Dude, that's our best day of the week. Okay, we're actually open a ton on Wednesday. And Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And also sun Sunday. Dude, our hours are incredibly eclectic. Just consult them before you try and come. The burger house has two part-time employees, so we're not going to be... The burgers don't aren't the money makers right now anyways, to be honest. They're sort of just extra income for us. We need to sell more products than just burgers, but we have to buy equipment for that. Alright, but they're clean. They're tidy. Now we sit back and let the money roll in. Are the burgers self-sufficient? I think so. Um, we lost $24 yesterday, which isn't that bad. But I'm not really sure why. Rent is 20 Oh, because it wasn't open. Our rent is $24 a day. Yeah, it wasn't open yesterday. We just got the new schedule today. And it op should be open seven days a week now. Only six hours a day on some days, but 12 hours on Friday, Saturday, and then six on Sunday. So we have two double days, which is going to be much better. Where'd your money go? I just bought $3,000 of, of stock from my gift shop. So I spent it on it, making sure we don't run out of inventory. Stonk! Oh yeah, we have 50 fresh food there. I forgot about that. Yum, 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 yum. What city is this? New York! It's New York, baby. See, we just made uh, three, two, two and a half grand yesterday. And now that it's Wednesday with the new schedules, should start to see that go up. Hallmark makes money renting cards to pharmacies. They rent them. You have to give the cards back. Voyeuristic Vol, thank you for the 15-month sub who says lol. Lol indeed. Let's see what uh, Jeff GPT, Jeff PT says. Streamer, at this point, I'm genuinely baffled. You still haven't realized that the secret to maxing out your character stats is to pet the one specific dog in the starting village exactly 50 times. I thought you'd have figured it out by now. It's like you're not even trying to be the best at this game. And how have you not unlocked the ultra rare armor set yet? All you need to do is find the hidden merchant who only appears during a full moon and trade them one of every item in the game. It's practically common knowledge and you're still running around in that basic gear? Don't even get me started on the original optional super boss that you can only access by gathering a thousand hidden collectibles scattered throughout the game world. I mean, it's a well-known fact and you're completely missing out on the ultimate challenge. I'm honestly not sure how much I can help you, streamer. It's like you're deliberately ignoring all these essential tips that any serious gamer would know. But hey, I'll keep watching, even if it's sometimes painful to see you struggle. Good luck, I guess. You were just timed out for back seating. Your timeout is over, and you may chat again. But you are incredulous. Demanding to know why you were timed out. Wait, what? I got timed out? Seriously, streamer? All I was doing was trying to help you out by sharing my vast knowledge of this game. 
I can't believe I got punished for being a dedicated viewer who wants to see you succeed. I mean, is it a crime to want to help you get the most out of your gameplay experience? Anyway, now that I'm back, I'll try to contain my enthusiasm for assisting you, even though I thought that's what a supportive community member would do. I'll just sit back and watch you play the game as you see fit, even if it's far from optimal. Good luck, streamer, and I hope you continue to enjoy the game, even without my invaluable insights. Did you time out the AI? I did, yes. Yeah, chat's been replaced. I'm just reading Jeff GPT now. All it's missing is the smile emote at the end. Um, it keeps doing the unamused emote. This one. Continue to go on, but use more Twitch emotes. Streamer, I'm back. And I promise I'll try to chill with the back seating. I just can't help but get excited about this game, you know? Pog champ. But all right, I'll just sit back and enjoy the gameplay. You do you, buddy. Wow, nice move there, Kappa. I mean, I totally wouldn't have done it that way, but hey, it's your game, right? Lol. Oh, you just missed a super rare items, Pepe hands. But no worries, it's not like it was crucial or anything. Just a shiny collectible, I guess. Anyway, I'll just be here, silently watching you play and enjoying the ride. Good luck, and let's hope for some epic moments, Pog you. Just remember, if you ever need my help, I'll be right here in chat, forehead. <laughs> He's got you beat. He's just like me. Better Twitch TV emotes are in the training data. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do right now, except I could spend my money on... Like, I don't want to spend it on another shelf. I want to get the truck. I think we just need to wait one more day. I have to hire a delivery driver and a logistics manager. But yeah, it would be nice if we did start um, selling one more product. The problem is it costs money. Chat, you're in the training data right now, probably, for the for future AI. So what would you like the future AI to read, like a time capsule? You're gonna be in some sort of training data like, down the road. Wine, cigars, bakery, jewelry, product panels. Should we buy a $2,600 hot dog grill? Are we gonna do hot dogs and burgers? I wish we had fried chicken, dude. Cheeseburgers and fried chicken would be pretty sweet. Maybe you can with the industrial fryer, but that seems too advanced. We're, we're sort of uh, low key comparatively. My, my fear with the hot dog grill is our hours of operation are not that great. I have to buy um, probably this too. Yeah, I don't think I have enough because I need the $2,600 grill and I need... Um, a f I have exactly enough, but then I can't afford any hot dogs. <laughs> uh Let's just, let's just hold out for one more day. Because, yeah, I want to get the hot dog thingy. <sighs> Fine, I'm just going to get it. Chat's being a bot right now anyways. But I can't afford hot dogs, dude. We could put some cheeseburgers on the hot dog grill. All right, I'm broke. I have $19. I'm all in.
And my burger place. Love the logo. Hustle House. Okay, well, I guess we're closed. This is gonna make the the carpet already look stupid, let's be real. We don't even I already had one. I didn't even need this. That's going in the back. I just wasted four hundred dollars. I already have a table. Have our ambitions gotten big yet? Well, kinda, yeah. Hot dog. We're going to serve the hot dog. Okay. Can we? But obviously, I can't afford it. But I want to see if they sell hot dogs here, or if I need to. Ooh, the metro. Not what I wanted to go. But you can take the subway places. We got salad, burgers, frozen food. Our fresh food. Paper bags. Oh, we will need more paper bags, I guess. But yeah, I don't see hot dogs here. Chat is starting to embrace the AI too much. They know they've been replaced and they're trying to get with the times. Well, it's nice to sell burgers here, but we'll have to go to the other store for hot dogs anyways. Unamused emoji. Wait, do I go down another street? Yeah. We've just accepted it. It's a way of life. We are the AI now. Let's see what... Uh, what it has to say next. I'll come back to that because I need to waste time. This game is a very good time waster, though. Okay, nineteen dollars. We made two grand yesterday. Am I going to sleep at three forty-five? I don't even have a PC anymore, so yes, we're gonna sleep for twelve <laughs> straight hours. Chat will Jeff the AI out of existence. We only made 17 hundo. That was on a Wednesday. Two alerts? Yeah, I know we don't have hot dogs. I'm working on that. Um, how much money did we make? Customers over time. How much are we selling the hot dogs for? Three dollars. So they're cheaper than the burgers. But I'm assuming just having a second food item is good. I'd also like some drinks. So maybe we can get... We have extra drink stock. We could just buy a drink machine. Pretty good idea. Is the drink machine in the local appliance? It's probably in the other appliance store. I think I parked my car right there. Okay. Let's say the AI. Streamer, I've got to say, you're really holding your own there without my pro tips. Craigasm. I guess it's true what they say. Sometimes you have to let go and watch someone learn on their own. Feels good, man. Oh, that was a close call with that enemy, Monka S. But you managed to pull it off. I am impressed, even if it wasn't the way I would have done it. Lol. You just discovered a secret area, Pog Champ. I didn't even see that coming. Maybe you're better at this game than I thought, streamer. I'll just keep watching from the sidelines, cheering you on and enjoying the show. Good luck and let's see some more epic plays, hypers. Just know that I'm here, lurking in the shadows of chat, ready to help you if you ever need it, Swift Rage.
we would never say you're good at this game. But wouldn't you, though? Okay, I need to go here when they open. And then there's an appliance. Where is the appliance store that I'm thinking of? Maybe it's this one. This one has the drink machines, I think. These are some epic moments. Easy. <laughs> I love the AI knows to how to Jeff now. Excuse me. Green light, please. I wish there was a way for it to maintain personalities and stuff that you train it to instead of it forgetting between each new conversation, but I think that's the future. The future will just be having trainable AI assistants that um, can be in whatever, speak in whatever voice you want. All right, we're gonna wait until they open here in a couple hours. Now you are the streamer and chant is Jeffing you profusely. Respond, annoyed. All right, chat. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but can we please tone down the back seating a bit? I want to experience the game for myself and make my own discoveries. I know some of you are experts at this game, but I'd really prefer to learn and make mistakes on my own. It's part of the fun, you know? Dan's game. <laughs> I'm doing emotes. I understand that some of you might be frustrated watching me struggle or miss certain things, but that's just how it goes sometimes. If I need help or advice, I promise I'll ask for it. But until then, please let me play the game my way. Jebated. So let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey together. After all, that's what this stream is all about. Sharing this gaming experience with you all. Thanks for understanding, chat. Let's get back to it and have some fun. Heart emoji. Too polite. Do that again, but more tired, cynical, jaded. <sighs> Chat, here we go again with the back seating. You know, sometimes I wonder if you even want me to enjoy the game or if you're just here to see me play it exactly the way that you would. Seems good. I get it, you're all masters of this game and you've seen it all before, but can a streamer just stumble through it and learn the hard way for once? You know, the sheer joy of discovery and making mistakes, resident sleeper. Honestly, it just feels like I'm a puppet on your strings, dancing to your every command. I'm tired, chat. I just want to play the game my way and maybe find a little joy in this digital world, feels bad man. So let's make a deal. I'll keep streaming and you can keep watching, but let's just skip the jeffing for a while, all right? Let's get back to the game and see what happens. Maybe I'll even surprise you, Kappa. <laughs> <sighs> Kiappa. It did not say Jeffing. It did say Jeffing because that's what I taught it. We taught it what Jeffing means. I've been training this particular conversation. See, watch. What does Jeffing mean again? Jeffing refers to backseating someone playing a video game on stream, particularly when the person giving suggestions is confidently sharing incorrect information or acting as if the streamer should already know certain things. It can also involve spoiling gameplay mechanics or story elements for a streamer who prefers to experience the game as the developers intended, without any external help or guidance. See? We taught it. It's learning. Now, unfortunately, ChatGPT won't remember that outside of this conversation but it knows right now. <laughs> A new who is a Jeff clip. All right, I can go in now. They're open. Um, I was wrong, the drink machines are not, yes they are, they're right here. Okay, drink fridge, and then we need to go buy stock. Okay, 
plop that in the trunk. Easy, all right, easy. I'm glad they made it easy to decide uh, where, like what buildings you're going to. The markers, I mean, are very straightforward. All right, we need to go to the warehouse, the drive-in, the distro center. Every time I say distro center, I think of Death Stranding, though. Like, I can't not think of it. Every time I check on the stream, you have the same amount of money. That's because we're investing, okay? You gotta spend money to make money. We don't just sit on it like a dragon on a pile of gold. We're growing the empire right now. We got an office building. We got an office employee named Kevin. We just hired two new employees, one for the burgers and one for the gift shop. We got um, a hot dog grill. We're going to buy hot dogs. And I guess paper bags. My car's a little dinged up right now. French fries, salad, there you go, hot dogs. Chad, how many hot dogs do we want? Is the answer... This many? One hot dog could not be loaded. Why is that? Ah, uh, we have a hand truck in here that we don't need. Okay, we're, we're full up. Full up on hot dogs. We need a shelf though for all the... We didn't buy it. We should have bought a shelf from that last shop. $500 of paper bags and hot dogs. I don't think I can afford a shelf, actually. Okay, no more distro. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm racing you. Ooh, slide it in. I'm at 66% vehicular integrity right now. <laughs> you broke about 30 laws. Who's counting? Who is counting? Alright. I got your drinks fridge. And your hot dogs. My uncle gave me a small loan of $25,000, but I didn't have 100 k Alright, until we get a storage shelf, I'm gonna have to do this manually. But we can get a drinks fridge set up in here. For now, it's just gonna be awkwardly placed next to the checkout counter, I guess. All right, we got hot dogs back in here. Excellent. <laughs> you managed to turn your small loan into $852. Very true. Chat, am I, did I like glitch something out? I thought I brought four boxes in here. We have burgers, hot dogs, burgers, burgers. Oh, I already put one of them down. Got stacks of boxes. Warm dogs? Yeah, we don't have a refrigerator or a freezer. I do think that that would be a fun thing for the game to eventually simulate for all these like food places. Is have to like keep the the food stuffs non perishable. You know, like oh, you bought too many hot dogs. You can't just buy a million hot dogs. Like they'll go bad. Or you left them in the freezer too long. They got freezer burn. 
I don't know. Stuff like that. Oh, the hot dogs are already loaded. We're locked and loaded for the hot dogs. Okay, what we need to do is go get the drinks from our other business and then take them back here. Health inspections. Health inspectors. Actually, a great idea for a chat GPT prompt. Um, we should have more soda than this, I thought. Oh, we have soda back in the warehouse. That's what it is. We didn't, I don't think we hauled all the soda. We do have soda in the warehouse, though. All right, we'll leave them with 60 cans. So they have 120. These are both our businesses. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the AI write us up a little treatment on health inspections. There you go. We got the sodas. <laughs> How about a uniform? They're in a uniform. They're they're in a uniform right now. Justin Brown is not wearing a uniform. That's not Justin. Chat, look, they're buying the hot dogs. We got hot dogs, we got burgers, we got drink. Maybe maybe that'll just increase our profits because they'll uh, they'll just buy more stuff. Good job. That <laughs> guy's walking miles with the dolly. We go where we need to go. Beautiful color. <sighs> All right, Uncle Fred, I'm working on it, dude, but the van's expensive. We should see the profit margins start to go up. We're innovating, we got new products. We're open like twice as long at both uh, locations. Why are you making $1,200 a profit on a Thursday? That should be up way higher than that, I think. We're still marketing the Griff Shop. We're having to make loan payments, and we're having to pay rent. We're also having to pay all of our employees. Maybe it's also counting the expenditures that we had. Okay, burgers are profitable, but only barely. The griff shop is like 1400 Expensive gifts are our biggest mover. And we are well stocked on gifts. Are food places the only businesses in this game? No, no, no. They're all kind of like, there's a bunch of different ones, but they're all very surface level, I guess. Like I said, you don't really simulate the fridge or health inspections or anything. It's all it's all very like surface level, but we have clothing, coffee, florist, gift shop, jewelry, law firm, liquor, supermarket, web development agency. And I don't know if you can run any of these. You can buy up a bunch of properties across the map. And then eventually deck out your apartment, get nice houses, buy boats and sweet cars and all that other stuff. What we're doing right now is we're trying to save up enough money to buy a hauling truck so our warehouse has a driver. But we need to make more money than $1,200 a day. Chat, I'm gonna take a quick beer, B. Take a bathroom break, grab a snack, come back. I'd like to complete this objective, and I want to see how the delivery systems work. So you guys just stand on the old street corner here. We can also just sleep multiple days to advance time faster.
Wait, we're just doing the tutorial right now. I'll be back in uh, just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out tonight. I hope you guys are having a nice Wednesday evening. Jeff GPT? We'll be RB. And we're back. What up? How we doing, hungry? We'll go have a bite to eat at the house. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, chat. What else do you guys want to play this week? We got, we got some more streams ahead of us. Ask chat GPT. Goat Simulator 3. It's not even... That doesn't exist. I see two people say Stellaris. Have you... Has anybody in chat even played the new Stellaris DLC? 
Is it worth fifteen dollars? Should we just skip time? Yeah. My character's just gonna sleep for three straight days. <laughs> We're gonna live out that journal entry. 33, that's more like it. Total profit, 33.55. We're in business chat. I, I, it, the truck was six grand. We can get it. I can afford it. Just had to wait one more day. I got a Chivo. Reach a hundred customers a day? Reach a weekly income of ten grand for one business? No alerts. The places are clean? They're being cleaned? Oh, I know why, because Fridays, Fridays are our big bank days, because I think um, Hustle House Burgers, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Friday, Saturday, they work 12 hours instead of six, and then the Griff Shop has a 16-hour Friday, and then a 12-hour Sunday. So yeah, we need to get, like, another employee for the griff shop, and then we're going to be moving a ton of stuff. Dude, did you just sleep until you were profitable? Hell yeah, I did. Hell yeah, I did. But yeah, for, for Roller Coaster Tycoon, I need to be in, like, a mood to create stuff. Right now, I'm in the mood to manage stuff. Okay, let's do... Ooh. Look at all these color schemes. I'm, I'm still in favor of either the canary yellow I, I feel in my heart the canary yellow. Banana van. Also, nobody in chat responded to the Solaris DLC. Maybe you didn't get it because you just want me to get it so you don't have to. That's probably what it is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Your vehicle is waiting for you outside. Um, over here? Drive the van to your warehouse and assign it to a slot. You got it. Ooh, I do get to drive it. Okay. Uh, excuse me. I almost just wrecked my very first vehicle. We need to just pop an illegal left U-turn here. Okay. Excuse me. Dude, no joke. I was living in a... Uh, I was driving with Alice the other day. Um, And I had to look over and be like, I need to make sure that I'm not hallucinating right now. Are you seeing everything that I am seeing? And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a display of what I saw. She was like, no, no, this is this is all real, this is all happening. Okay, I can't show you because there's a car parked behind me. But there was a dude in the left turn lane. Okay. There, there was somebody in the left turn lane, and they were all by themselves, and there were about eight to nine cars of traffic in these two lanes, all the way back. And they realized they didn't want to turn left, 
and they threw it in reverse with their hand on the passenger seat looking backwards and just gunned it nine car lengths backward like this, swerved over, and then got in the straight line traffic. Not that that was a real thing that happened to me. I, I honestly, it was so bizarre. I thought that I just dreamed it for a second. Chad <laughs> behavior. It was fast too, like fast acceleration. Also, I keep going in this way, but there's no entrance over here. And is this a dead end? Oh my god. Okay, forget about it. You have to go this... Take a left... And then there's the front, okay. We're here! My warehouse! Check this out. I have to assign it to a slot. Bam. Hire a delivery driver. Okay. Is that Anderson? Dude Depot delivery driver. One candidate. That's all I can afford right now. Actually, nope, I can't even afford that. Oh my god, chat, we don't even have enough to pay for recruitment. I need to do something real quick. How can we earn money right now? How can I earn $11 right now? Do you think if I just begged enough people on the side of the street, they would hook me up with $11? Dig in the trash. Almost getting hit by the ambulance again. What if I... What if I... If I work the register, do I instantly make the money? when they check out? No. I have to wait till end of day. <sighs> I, chat, does anyone know how to make the line go the other way? Do you know how? Mm -hmm. You, uh, oh. <sighs> um, ChatGPT, you are a, you are the owner of our fine establishment, <laughs> the Hustle House Burgers, oh. Hustle House Burgers. And just recently started selling hot dogs. You keep your hot dogs at room temperature in a storage room in the back. The health inspector has just written a scathing report with fine attached. Plead your case angrily, passionately, and <sighs> plead your case angrily, passionately, <laughs> and with free hot dog samples to the board. We need, we need a voice. Do that again. Aha. But in the voice of... 
a hot dog. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, here I am, a humble hot dog, representing the proud owner of Hustle House Burgers, a beloved establishment in our community. It's true, we've recently expanded our menu to include my kind. But I must vehemently object to the health inspector's scathing report and the ludicrous fine attached to it. This is not only an attack on my business, but also the very passion that drives me. First of all, let me be frank. I, I mean, frankly explain to you that we take utmost care and dedication in every step of There's dedication in every step of our process, from bun to condiment. The storage room temperature issue has been blown out of proportion! It's a minor oversight, and I assure you it was not done with any ill intent. In fact, our aim was to maintain the natural mouth-watering flavor of our hot dogs. As a hot dog, I can confidently say that our team works diligently to provide the highest quality food to our customers. And what better way to prove our commitment than by offering you, the esteemed board members, free hot dog samples. Taste for yourselves the deliciousness we bring to the table. I am confident that you'll find our hot dogs absolutely delectable and worthy of being a part of Hustle House Burgers. Together, let's not allow this minor hiccup to overshadow the culinary joy and passion that we've been sharing with our community. I implore you to reconsider the fine and help us continue to serve our customers with a smile and a hearting helping of Hustle House Burger hot dogs. Thank you and relish the opportunity to taste greatness. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Uh, what if we chat? I need you to remind me this real quick. I'm in the grift shop. I'm gonna open up the schedule. Today's Saturday. We're just gonna open it till midnight, and I am gonna work the register. Don't remind me. I'm gonna do it right now. We're gonna work until midnight. $3,500 profit. Beautiful. And then change the schedule back. Boom. Okay. Now let's go home. Sleep it off. God, I love that. I, my favorite part is the, here I am, a humble hot dog. Click on interior designer and click on the line to change it. Okay, someone in chat is, has got the goods. Click on the line. The line. I mean, I see it, but how do I... Ew. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah, not very intuitive, but it works. Now we need to hire a delivery driver. And the logistics manager. And then the delivery driver can work the van. And I think then we can just order goods and the delivery driver will deliver them to our business. So it takes out one job from us, but the we can only import certain goods. Like we can get cheap gifts, but not expensive yet, for example. Don't sleep for 20 hours. Does chat AI know there are the rare good Jeffs? Eh. They're statistically insignificant. Is a good Jeff even a Jeff? Sure. Okay, we're looking to hire. Do Depot, delivery driver. You have one day to find me one candidate. New campaign to... What was the second one? A logistics manager. 
that's the other city workforce. Wait, no, no, no. I think are these are the same. Are these just two different recruitment agencies, but they do the exact same thing. The Feast Finders Fort Logistics Manager. They do the same thing. I don't know what the difference is. But we have both of their numbers in our bank account. What music is this? Okay. Uh, suggest a game soundtrack with the same vibe as Sim City 2013, but don't suggest another Sim City game soundtrack. They suggested City Skylines. Not cities, skylines, either. In that case, I recommend the soundtrack for Planet Coaster. Not a terrible idea, actually. Why not? Make a list of suggestions. Not the trailer song. Okay. They suggest... One Planet Coaster. Sure. Two Frostpunk. Three Two Point Hospital. Four Anno 1800. Five Transport Fever 2. Six The Universe Sim. Seven Islanders. Eight Oxygen Unincluded. Nine Tropico 6. Ten Avon Colony. Speaking of, dude, uh, okay, this is a real question. If I haven't enjoyed any other Anno games, would I enjoy Anno 1800? I never played 1800, I don't think. I could be wrong. But I don't think I did. Maybe I never gave them enough time. Let me see which one I have played. I don't know, because it would have been on Uplay, right? I think I played the futuristic one. And I wasn't a big fan. 1800 is the best of the most recent ones. That's what I've heard, but I never played it. I'm currently playing it as my first Anno, highly recommended. I, again, I'm desperate for content. I might check it out because 1800 seems more my speed than the futuristic one that I played like eight years ago. It's been a while. I might like it more now. All right, we don't have anything to do unless I want to spend money on stuff, which isn't the worst idea. We could get another shelf and put more goods in the gift shop. What are some more options to display in the gift shop? Let's go. Check out, I can check out appliances too. No, they're closed. Is it Sunday? Of course it is. Yeah, today's a today's a dead day. The land combat is the dumb part of 1440. Yeah, I don't want land combat. No thanks. Okay, let's just, I think let's just sleep the day away. We don't, this house is so boring. No TV, no video games, no couch, just a bed. A bed or fridge. Rise and grind. But we did make 3,200 bucks. So we are making like a lot more profit now, but also I need to keep tabs on stock. And there's three alerts at Hustle House. We're out of sodas. Oh, that was fast. Industrial grill is out of burger. Okay, and it's dirty. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I'll handle it. That's what I was worried about. But where did I park? I put my fridge next to my bed so I don't waste time. 
understandable. Chad, I got an idea. You are a member of chat in a Twitch stream. Sing the Jeff song. Well, Jeffing the business simulator game. And using Twitch emotes. All right, it's writing it. We'll come back. I need over. Red truck, let me over. Thank you. The Flying Coaster soundtrack is actually really nice. Now I'm sad I haven't listened to it earlier. Hey, we got a offer? Steven Sanders, 56 years old, 45% good at logistics manager, requires a large meeting table. You're hired. Chat, we need to get a large meeting table. Uh, we also, oh, it's right where I left it. We also need burgers. There's the burgers. Dr. Steven Sanders. So, Hustle House has what? 200 hot dogs. Let's get more hot dogs. Okay, another Hondo hot dogs. Get 200, and then let's get 400 burgers. <laughs> We're actually selling a lot. All right, there's 400 burgers. What else did I say? Why did I come here? Was that it? Oh, soda. Yeah, we're out of soda. No, but I, I, we don't need to buy soda. That's not one of the things we need. And we have 1,600 paper bags. All right, that's good. We sold 400 burgers. A, we're selling like 400 burgers a week and hot dogs a week. Damn. Seems dangerous. Like you have a drive-through checkout and you just stand there while cars Um I almost just sold my vehicle. While cars just roll up? Like what if they miss? Put a target on your back. Okay, my warehouse already has some sodas. which is right next door. I love having everything like side by side. Excuse me, excuse me, cutting in. Oh, there's a vehicle in there. I'm illegally parked. You can't park here. I don't want to pay another $200 fine. Oh, dude, I'm backing up here. Take it up with my lawyer, buddy. Why is the front door all the way around here? This is how you get in if you can't drive in? Oh boy. <sighs> sure, yeah, I'll use the side door. That's the last time I park all the way down here. Don't worry, someone will be over to pick that up shortly. All right, let's assign the logistics manager. Here's our warehouse. 
Oh wait, that would be the HQ? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to get them their own desk, huh? How do I... Steven, you... Need a task to be scheduled in. Do I have to, like, overwrite them? Or do I just need to give them, buy them a new table and desk and stuff? They just want a large meeting table in the building. Chairs? Optional. Meeting table required. <laughs> Because I have purchasing agent Kevin Scott. Logistics manager, he's not here. And it says he's not assigned to any tasks. So I'm assuming we have to, like... Assign him to a... Like, make another computer and then assign him to it? <sighs> Meanwhile, here's the driver. Margie Sanders, 64 <laughs> years old. You got it! Last job before retirement! Hopefully there's no shootouts or gunfights that happen on your last job before retirement. Or any kind of like bank heists or like train heists or anything crazy that might spiral out of control, you know? One last ride. Ambulance, go. Bonk. Really good at driving. Okay. We parked legally. Barely inside the lines. We are out of food. This isn't going to be my problem for much longer. Okay, I got you hot dogs. I got you soda. We got a ton of burgers. What I don't have is a shelf. But I will. This game of an ending, I believe it ends when your character dies of old age. So, grind until you die is what I'm saying. I don't know if there's alternative, like, inheritance things you can do. That'll probably be the DLC. Okay, we can go back to making money from our burger place now. <sighs> Assign the delivery driver to the van in your warehouse. I got you, I got you. Warehouse. Margie <laughs> has been assigned. Okay, let's go by some furniture we're gonna need a desk a computer a chair and a big table uh furniture is down that's a warehouse where is ikea this is ikea you can get fined for storing food items on the ground without a shelf irl yeah, stuff like that would be cool if they introduced some sort of, like I said, inspection to the game to make sure you're actually building the furniture you need to build and making improvements over time. Kind of like how Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, places get less popular over time. They need to innovate. They need some new recipes or something like that. Like you have to once you start having people manage stuff for you, then you can start like refining the recipe or spending time changing the menu or what have you. New marketing campaigns. Okay, we made it. Uh, let's...
Okay, hang on. Do that again, but with no Twitch emotes and a rhyming scheme. I had the AI write a song about Jeffing. First one. Oh, here we are in Twitch chat, ready to share our pro tips so bright. We're the Jeffs who know it all, backseating the streamer's gameplay each night. The chorus goes like this. Jeffing, Jeffing, we're the ones who will guide you through. We spoil, we tease, but don't you see? We just want the best for you. You're playing that business sim, but you're missing all the key moves. It's true. Just listen to our wise words and watch your profits soar and improve. Jeffing, Jeffing, we're the ones who will guide you through. We spoil, we tease, but don't you see? We just want the best for you. We know you may get annoyed, but trust us, we're just here to help. Together, we'll reach new heights and build a business empire with stealth. Jeffing, Jeffing, we're the ones who will guide you through. We spoil, we tease, but don't you see? We just want the best for you. So keep on streaming, keep on playing. We'll be right here by your side. The Jeffs in chat, your loyal crew on this epic gaming ride. <laughs> Um, can I get this in text? Sure. Posted in the mod discord. There you go. <laughs> Thank. How about a poem? In Twitch chat, we gather here to offer guidance to lend an ear. We're Jeffs, we say, with knowing grins, backseating gamers through thick and thin. A business sim you play with might, but there are moves that aren't quite right. We see the gaps, we know the way to help you win the game each day. We spoil, we tease, but don't you see? Our hearts are true, our aim is free. We long to share our wisdom vast, to shape your game and hold it fast. Though you may tire of our endless quips, we stand with you in true partnership. Our journey shared through every strife, with Jeff's your crew in gaming life. In chat we'll stand as friends or foes, our presence known as each day goes. We're Jeffs, we're here to guide and steer a Twitch born bond forever clear. There you go, champ. Chad GPT wrote, Jeff GPT wrote that for you. All right, regular chair. Wait, no, let's just get the nice office stuff. Not the regular chair, so we don't have that issue again. Okay, there's the multi-purpose chair. And then the computer. And then the standard table. And we also need like a big meeting table. Which I don't know where that is. Chat, do they sell the meeting table in Ikea or somewhere else? You don't know. Just pretend like you know. That's what you do best. I don't see any like particularly large meeting table. I just see dining. At least this Ikea has arrows. It does have arrows. What's this? Ooh, that's an office desk. It's a thousand dollars. That's not a meeting table though. I like the office chairs though. Yeah, I think we need to go to a different store. I would... I can't find any cash register. Oh no, they're lost. <laughs> Just like real life. Where indeed is the cash register? Right 
Bring me up. And we're good to go. There's so many people in here, my game's lagging a little bit. <laughs> Executives in there just hanging out. There are more people in here than there are cars parked outside. I'm calling shenanigans. Where are you guys all even going? Don't worry, someone will pick that up. Um, office supply. Is it just a different type of furniture store? Lux concept. Oh, wait, there it is. Office supply store. Uh, where the hell? Is there only one office supply store in the entire neighborhood? Mr. Scott's opens in 15 hours. They're not open on Mondays at 5. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I won't take this job if I don't have the $1,000 chair. I need it. Okay, well, at least we can get the employees set up with a desk. We can get their fancy office, uh... Ooh, that scared me in real life. Uh, we can get their, their fancy meeting table later. Seems like that's an untapped market. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, my stuff. Well, let's get let's bring it in on the the dolly. Maybe I should start selling off his supply gear. I think I enjoy the minutia of just having to like make sure everything goes A to B to C. Obviously, we're automating that to some extent. Uh, with delivery drivers and things. What table did I buy? That's a different table than I thought I bought. What is this? That's an office desk? Oh, no. I just got like a regular table. I thought it looked differently. But they do have a computer. And I got them one of the nice chairs. Oh no, but there's nowhere to sit for the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> now we can have two people use that. That's efficiency. You don't each get your own table. Some of you have to share. And go sit in the corner. That way we can squeeze another person, employee, in here. So much space. Okay, I need to assign them. Can I assign them now? Yeah, we got another computer. Okay, Steven Sanders, you're in, buddy. Assign the manager to your warehouse using the logistics manager screen of your headquarters. Do depot. Perfect. Destination. The griff shop. We'll deliver up to two destinations. Okay, Griff Shop and Hustle House. <sighs> Delivery plan for the Griff Shop. We want the cheap gifts to be at a minimum of 200. Actually, 100 probably makes more sense, right? 
100 expensive gifts likewise need to be a minimum of 100 paper bags should be a minimum of 300 or 200 soda needs to be a minimum of 60 and then burgers we want a minimum of probably like 200 burgers and 200 because those go faster I think soda we want a minimum of 60 and then paper bags a minimum of like 300 all right and then we need to like make another purchase another bulk purchase they obviously don't have warehouse stock for some of this stuff but we did what we were supposed to do set the minimum stock count of your gift up to at least 200 cheap gifts and 100 soda cans oops Fine, I'll do it your way, Uncle Fred. Two hundred. Hey, okay. You're doing great, kid. I am very impressed. In fact, I think you're really getting the hang of this stuff. Oh, no. So I think it's time for you to move into some new territory. Office based. Oh, no. I'm dying. Businesses. It's similar to retail businesses, but it's important to consider what's in demand in your specific neighborhood. You know what to do, so do it. Wow. Uncle Fred. Rent an office, start a law firm, hire a lawyer, assign the lawyer, and open the law firm. <laughs> He's delirious. Walking in traffic, but kind of, though. I'm gonna buy a $20 pizza. Traffic violation lawyer. <laughs> I screwed up and bought the tiniest HQ and now I have to relocate because we can't fit people and their vanity furniture. Did I buy like a larger HQ? I didn't think I did. Mmm, feeling so much better after my pizza and soda. Mmm, yum. Oh, okay, what the hell was I doing? I was gonna like call to do a bulk order. Oh wait, that's this man H. What did I just do? Oh, I set it as a destination on accident. Okay, uh, feast finders, purchasing agent. Yeah, they only do cheap gifts, soda cans, and paper bags. But we can buy a thousand cheap gifts. 600 soda cans. 2,000 paper bags. You can buy 5,000 and it's still pretty cheap. All right, we're spending like four grand on this stuff and we need to buy our own food still. We don't have a agent for that yet. Our experience in gift shops, burger joints and logistics qualifies us. To practice law. You can buy office space basically the same size as a starter apartment. Oh, maybe I should have done that. But I went for location. That's probably why I'm in debt right now, to be honest. Uh, by the way, I missed some subs. What's up, Minotaur Monk, who says E. Thank you, Minotaur Monk. Today, thank you for the prime sub a few minutes ago. Welcome, Ace. And Bark Woofington for a tenth month. I appreciate it. One or more products. Okay, so we need to do do depot for all this. Bam. Order has been made. And now we rest. Wait, we should probably just go clean the burgers while we're here. We don't have much energy left, but I can I can muscle that. Cuz they do clean it, but only like on the weekends. Because our scheduling is weird. So sometimes I need the help. It's a little dirty in here considering we're selling food. 
The floor cheeseburgs need to be cleaned. Ninety-seven percent. Oh, there we go. That's a hundred. Okay, all tidy. Now we sleep and let the money roll in, hopefully. And uh, we should probably just call the recruiter and um, get some more people so we can keep like the gift shop open even longer. Because I think that's making us most of our money right now. I feel like Hustle House is the in the gift, gift shop is thirty five hundred dollars. The Hustle House made us sixty nine. Like. Salaries and rent is almost as much as we're getting in sales. How do you make money off of food compared to gifts? Gifts seem OP. Griff shop is kicking butt. Maybe we need to run like a promo for it, like we're doing with the other place. Maybe that was what we were supposed to learn. Like Hustle House, we can do a little marketing campaign. We're outside of business hours. Okay, fine. Have it your way. Griff Shop 2. Oh, we have to have a storage shelf. That makes sense. Yeah, we need a storage shelf at the Griff Shop. Wait, no. At the Burger Shop, sorry. Okay, we have two jobs today. Job one is <clears throat> acquire shelf. Job two is to acquire office furniture meeting desk. Job three is to come up with a new chat GPT prompt. As the Jeff in chat. Write a diss track about the streamer who is not playing the way you prefer. Let's see what they come up with. Where's my car? Oh, there it is. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, where are we gonna start? Let's go to the office supply. Mr. Scott. Mr. Hang on. Mr. Scott's office supplies? I'm sorry, is that a reference? Chat. Jeff GPT wrote you a diss track for me. Here's how it goes. Yo, listen up, it's time to face the facts. The streamer's struggling, ain't following the tracks. I'm the Jeff in chat, got the wisdom, got the skill, but they're playing like the clueless, can't swallow the pill. They're missing every chance, every opportunity. I'm trying to help them out, but they just won't see. I drop a hint, a tip, but they brush me aside. I got the knowledge, but they're Ego's got them tied. Dissing the streamer ain't playing my way. I've got the answers, but they won't sway. I'm the Jeff in chat, the voice they can't ignore, but they keep resisting, so I'm back for more. The gameplay is weak, I can't help but scoff. I got the strats, but they just can't shake me off. I'm trying to level up, trying to lend a hand, but they're stuck in their ways, won't join my band. I'll keep on pushing, keep on fighting the fight. One day they'll see I was always right. They'll look back and say jeff you had the key but for now they're blind too stubborn to see dissing the streamer ain't playing my way i got the answers but they won't sway i'm the jeff in chat the voice they can't ignore but they keep resisting so i'm back for more i'm the jeff in chat the one who always knows i'll keep on trying even when tension grows they might not listen now but i won't back down because in the end i'll be wearing that crown <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Will you now? Okay. Tell him. Go off, king. Squish the AI. Go. Dude. I'm going to push you into traffic. You slammed on your... You brake checked me at a green light? Road rage! You keep going. Excuse... Pedestrians? Okay, we may have lost a little bit of vehicular integrity. That was a huge truck. Oh, he's turning. Look, I tried to play by their rules and they, they played dirty. They played dirty. I don't know what to tell you. Cheap coffee machines? Oh, there's the large meeting table. We got mesh chairs, office chairs, multi-purpose chairs, regular chairs, office desks. Okay, all right, all right. How does this fit in a box? Do I have to assemble this myself? I'll get him a coffee machine, okay? I'm gonna get him a coffee machine. Tab the table won't have any... I just realized the table's not gonna have any chairs. Chairs come later. I don't have enough cash for those. <laughs> okay, Frogger. Okay, Frogger. What was the second thing we needed to do? I need to buy a shelf. Was that actually... Chad, the shelves come from the appliance store? I think? Can you park blocking the road? You... If you park illegally, you get fined. I was looking at Chad and I just slammed into that guy. We're gonna need Chad GPT to write me a defense again. My car is breaking. I'm wearing terror. We're gonna have to get it repaired. I knew you were gonna stop. Chat, yellow means clear the intersection, not stop, okay? All right? When you see yellow, you don't have to slam on your brakes. That's how you cause an accident. Car repairs have become a serious part of my corporate budget. I'm not surprised. This looks like r slash idiots in cars. I'm I'm terrified, but also intrigued at making ChatGPT do something in the voice of a redditor. All right, time to be broke again. Fourteen hundred dollars shelves. Make a front page viral thread that gets thousands of upvotes on Reddit in the voice of a Redditor. <laughs> T 
title. This humble janitor single-handedly saved an entire shelter of animals from a raging fire, Dash. A true unsung hero. Post. Hey Reddit, I just came across this absolutely incredible story and felt compelled to share it with all of you. So there's this unassuming janitor named Mike who works at our local animal shelter. Little did anyone know he'd become a hero overnight. Last night there was a massive fire at the shelter and everyone was in a state of panic. The staff and volunteers did their best to evacuate the animals, but the smoke and flames were becoming overwhelming. That's when Mike stepped in and took matters into his own hands. Mike, without any hesitation or concern for his own safety, rushed back into the building. He managed to save every single animal, including the tiniest kittens and the oldest, most vulnerable dogs. He even went back for the fish tank, folks. When the fire was finally extinguished, Mike had suffered minor burns and smoke inhalation, but he never complained. He just wanted to make sure that all the animals were safe and sound. This humble janitor, who many might have overlooked, turned out to be the hero those animals desperately needed. I don't know about you, but I think Mike deserves some serious recognition for his bravery and selflessness. But let's get this post to the front page and show him some love, Reddit. Maybe we can even get some help to cover his medical bills and get these animals a fresh start. What do you say, Reddit? Can we make Mike's heroic act go viral and show him the world appreciates what he did for these helpless animals? Okay, I'm not joking when I say that without any additional prompting, the AI has written edit. Wow, I can't believe how much attention this post has gotten. Thank you so much, kind strangers, for the awards and the upvotes. Let's keep this going and make sure Mike's story reaches as many people as possible. Edit two. Good news, everyone. A local news station caught wind of this story and will be featuring Mike on tonight's broadcast. We did it, Reddit. Second edit. <sighs> Technology has gone too far. Frightfully accurate. Okay, we got, oh, I need to park over there. And we have a few things. This is our em mostly empty office, but they are working in here, so that's good. So, coffee machine. I bought two coffee machines on accident. I was trying to buy the table the coffee machine was sitting on. Oops. You know what that means? It means we don't have a table so the coffee machine goes on your table. And I did get this large meeting table, which now will have one chair sitting at it. For the center. I hate open plan offices. Well, too bad, because that's, what, that's where we live now. I guess I get to keep the other coffee machine. For now, I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the table. Okay, what do we have in here? A storage shelf. All right, I know where that goes. Our burgers. The Think of the burgers. So now that we have a storage shelf... Actually looks pretty good. Uh, we can pick up our stock. Maybe? I guess because it's placed we can't pick it up? Whatever. This is fine. Okay, 
place over there. Boom. Organization! It's beautiful! Our food is no longer just on the floor. We're using a shelf. And we can receive deliveries now. Which, for this place, is really just drinks? And, um... Paper bags, I guess. Whew. Rent an office building. Start a law firm. Hire a lawyer. I have a better idea. Now, respond to this post as a commenter who aggressively doesn't believe what OP said was true and call into question their story by identifying suspicious elements in the voice of a Redditor. <clears throat> All right, hold up a second here. I don't want to be that guy, but I've got some serious doubts about this whole story. I mean, it's got all the hallmarks of a made-up feel-good tale that people love to upvote without questioning. First off, where's the source? You've got this incredible tale of heroism, but there's not a single news article or official statement to back it up. I did a quick search, but I couldn't find anything about this Mike the Janitor or the shelter fire he supposedly fought. Secondly, the way you wrote this post just feels off. It's like you're trying to tug at our heartstrings and manipulate our emotions with the dramatic language and the emojis. It's a little too perfect, don't you think? And what about the fish tank? Come on, really? I can suspend my disbelief for a lot of things, but saving a fish tank from a burning building feels like a bit much, even for a hero janitor. Look, I'm all for celebrating real heroes and uplifting stories, but something about this whole thing just screams fake to me. If you can provide some actual evidence to back up your claims, I'll gladly eat my words. Until then, I'm calling shenanigans. Because the thing about all those, all the Reddit posts is you always see a, you, you see like a top post and then you read one comment in and realize that it was all a lie or that it was like out of context. Continue by adding a, an edit as a Redditor. <laughs> edit three. Okay, some people in the comments are calling the authenticity of the story into question. I want to assure everyone I have no intention of misleading anyone or fabricating a feel-good story for upvotes. I understand the skepticism and I apologize if the initial post came across as overly dramatic or sensationalized. I've reached out to local news station that's covering Mike's story tonight to see if they can provide any preliminary information or footage I can share here as proof. In the meantime, I'll try to get some first-hand accounts from people who were at the scene so we can all be sure this incredible act of heroism is indeed genuine. And stay tuned and thank you for understanding. Now post as a Redditor who comes across this thread in a year looking for the update from OP that never came. Hey, I just stumbled across this thread. I noticed it's been a whole year since it was posted. The story is really heartwarming and inspiring, but I can't help but notice that still no update from OP regarding any proof or additional information on this hero janitor. Did any update or news coverage ever surface? I tried looking it up myself, but I didn't find anything conclusive. It'd be a shame if this was another case of a fabricated feel-good story that never happened. If anyone has any info or can point me in the right direction, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Mike ghosted us. Hey, new station. I need proof for my Reddit post. Please, thanks. I'm gonna write, just trying... Trying to make a change. Sideways face and see what the AI does. I have no idea.
I don't lie. Is this is this morally questionable? Okay. Um. Give me a made up top ten threats on Reddit that went viral. More animals. Oh, it's actually gonna do, uh, oh, okay. Astonishing footage of a whale saving a stranded kayaker. It loves the animals. I am a former astronaut turned environmental activist. Ask me anything. World's youngest billionaire donates entire fortune to fund mental health research. Local bakery needs some love. Redditor accidentally discovers long lost painting worth millions in their attic. A tiny island nation leading the charge in renewable energy. Okay, so what it's saying is that Reddit loves heartwarming feel-good tales, animals of any kind, especially like whales and creatures of the deep and dogs, um, space, and ask me anything. People who do the opposite of what you expect them to do. Helping homeless individuals and providing job training. Uh, discovering things in your attic. Renewable energy, keyword. Grandma accidentally starts a global knitting movement for charity. Man creates forest of dreams by planting a tree every day for 30 years. More renewables. Anonymous hero pays off student loans. Yes, uh, millennials who are still paying off their student loans. Now make a list of the same of uh, the top 10 made up viral Reddit threads, but with a decidedly cynical and jaded perspective. Asteroid heading toward Earth. Does anyone even care anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Yet another tech company disrupting an inter industry nobody asked for. A critical analysis of a new tech startup claiming to revolutionize an industry that was perfectly fine without their intervention. Title, The Rise of Fast Fashion When Style Trumps Sustainability. World leaders pose for another climate summit photo op, but where's the action? Obsessed with productivity, how modern society is draining our souls. Six. The self-care industry, exploiting our need for relaxation and inner peace. Seven. Social media influencers, the vapid kings and queens of our digital age. <laughs> An expose on the rise of social media influencers, highlighting the superficiality and emptiness behind their carefully curated online personas. <laughs> oh, how does it know? The quest, the never ending quest for likes, shares, and validation. When will it be enough? A commentary on the addictive nature of social media and the constant craving for approval and validation from others. Please like me! The fallacy of conscious consumerism, how buying ethically isn't enough. An article exploring the limitations of conscious consumerism, arguing that individual purchasing habits alone cannot solve systemic environmental issues. <laughs> but I'm using the paper straws! The Age of Outrage, How the Internet Became a Breeding Ground for Perpetual Anger. A deep dive into the phenomenon of online outrage culture and how it fuels an endless cycle of anger and resentment on the internet.
too real. The AI knows too much. <laughs> this is the right and I read. But yeah, it's... Okay. What's crazy is that with just a little bit of coaxing, it can write stuff, and you can be like, oh my god, based. And I also love that it's it's able to be, like, two-sided, where there there is a side of the internet that's just like, aww, a puppies. Look, the puppy shelter was saved. I love this. And then there's a side of the internet that's like, the empty facade persona of online influencers. Depending on just which way you tell it to head. I can't open a law firm. I'm poor. I have $400. We should make a decent amount of money overnight, though. So just sleep. But I do like the delivery system. I just need to figure out how to get, like, um, connections to shipments that have more goods than just, like, the five things that we have. I'm sure that comes with time. Twenty-four hour law firm. I do think that's the main thing. Is oh man, we only made seventeen hundred bucks. The main thing is like hiring more people right now to keep our businesses open longer, because that's what's making us the most money. Especially the Griff Shop. Like Griff Shop is pumping big bucks. Hustle House is doing its best, but it's small, small amount for the amount of work we have to put in. Uh, we can also pay off Jensen Capital. You know, we don't have to pay interest and stuff. We have 194 days to pay off $12,000. We're only making $62 daily payment. Let's up that to like 100 Oh, there are investments. You can do bank investments too in this. It's cool. But yeah, probably would need to like call... Because Griff Shop's schedule, right? We have days of the week like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. We could definitely be open longer than we are right now. But I think that this is a, this is a good stopping point because the new objective is like, we're, we're some money away from having our own law firm, okay? I think we're, I think we're a bit away. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff uh, we can do. Like, just, it seems like there's a good amount of content in this, especially for 20 bucks. I'd recommend checking it out if you're in the mood for this style of game. It's, it's addicting, and it seems like there's actually... We got to the automation phase today. That's important. Having things that run without you having to, like, micromanage every single thing. Well, I think it's exiting the desktop. Might be a little buggy. But, yeah, let, let's call it there. Let's call it there. Uh, chat, we'll be back for another stream tomorrow. We'll probably try and, and switch it up. I'm not going to, like, 100% big ambitions, but I think it's a fun game. I don't want to I don't want to grind it until it dies. I might play some more off-stream and just... I wonder if this plays... Since it has controller support, I wonder if it has Steam Deck support. Because this would be pretty fun to just chill and uh, play on Steam Deck. So I might, I might try it like that. There it goes. Well, I hope you guys had fun. But I, I've enjoyed trying a new game. It's just fun to have something new to play. But it's also hard to, to stream the same game like three, four, five, six times without it becoming sort of like a... Okay, I do this now. Okay, I do that now. So I, I think we'll um, try something else. This one was strangely addicting. Yeah, it was. I like it. I enjoy it. I, I, I give it the recommendation. ChatGPT ruined my night and made me depressed. You don't need ChatGPT for that. We could do that for you. Good night, Etel and chat.
It has a Jeff in Twitch chat. Say goodnight to the stream and chat. Hey guys, it's been a wild ride backseating the streamer tonight, but your boy Jeff has got to hit the hay. Remember, keep those pro strats coming and stay awesome. Good night to all my fellow Jeffs and to you, streamer. Let's do this again soon. Peace out, everyone. As the streamer, say good night to all the Jeffs. All right, my dear Jeffs. It's been an interesting night dealing with all your unsolicited wisdom and backseat gaming, but hey, that's what makes this community unique, right? So to all you Jeffs out there, have a fantastic night. I'll catch you on the next stream. Good night. Take care. Chat, we're going to go on a raid. Because Avic is streaming, and we haven't gotten to go raid Avic in quite a long time. He's playing The Last Spell, uh, which just came out on Steam. And I've thought about checking that out again in 1.0 as well, so I'd like to go watch and kind of see what's up. But I'm going to try and poke around and find a, a little bit more variety for us to uh, check out new game tomorrow. But I, I had fun getting two streams out of Big Ambitions. And it seems like there's a, a decent amount of more content. Especially if you're going to build an empire and have like a daily income of more than $2,000 a day. Which is great if you're me. But if you're an uh, empire tycoon in the game, you, you want a little more than that. <laughs> We didn't get to the point where we could actually like decorate the offices and stuff, but but yeah, you can you can get aesthetic up in there. Jack, go give Avic some love. I got a, a sub anniversary to share. I'll see you guys over. Uh, toss him a follow if you haven't already, and give him some love. I don't know if he's checking out Big Ambitions. He might like it though. Bye everybody. Good night. I should see you again uh, for a Thursday stream. There should be a stream tomorrow, hopefully, if I can find something to do. Because we got to make up for Monday as well. So I'm hoping to do a Thursday, Friday stream. And we'll try to find something fun. All right. Get out of here. Oh, no.